Hey, yeah, buddies, it's the Bennington Show. I'm Ron Bennington. And I am Gail Bennington. Enjoying this song I read this morning. Um, directly after the show today, I run across the street and I light up the Christmas tree. I'll be doing that at 8 o'clock tonight. You'll be able to see me on NBC with some of my special guests. <laughs> Michael Buble is going to be there. The Today Show crew. And, uh, Vito, who else is uh, on that uh, list? Because I like to get the real Christmas singers out there every year. And I picked out a beautiful tree this year. Beautiful tree. Uh, it's very thin at the top, almost pointy. Okay. But as it goes down, it gets fatter and wider and wider. The, just the opposite last year, and people what? hated it. <laughs> what color did you go with this year? I went green, but I got all kinds of bulbs on it. Oh, yes. All right, Diana Ross. First of all, I don't know whether you guys are familiar with a, a group called The Supreme. She was in that. Okay, that seems like a big get. Yeah. I want to hope to have her either do Love Child <laughs> or a song that I just call Baby Baby. Where did our love go? <laughs> Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett, I'm going to get out there because he's a great guy at Christmas time. He's going to be dreaming of a white Christmas this year. John Legend. I'm going to have John Legend because I love the tone that he sings in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He brings it way down to that... Uh, kind of comfortable Stevie Wonder tone. That means Chrissy Teigen's going to be there, too. I don't know, because I said this time, no dates. So we could all go out after and see what happens. No plus ones, huh? Well, I mean, you know, Tony Bennett doesn't have a plus one, God rest his soul. And, you know, Barry Gordy is no longer with uh, the Supreme, so. Diana Krall. Yeah, I'm going to have her crawl out. I thought that that would be fun. Yeah. Brett Eldridge. I'm going to have Brett Eldridge come. That's a new closer uh, that's going to be with the San Diego Padres this year. <laughs> and I mean, just throw smoke. They go into the ninth inning with a lead. Forget about it. They're winning that game. It sounds automatic. Yeah. Darcy Lynn Farmer. Darcy Lynn Farmer is a, just a great young farmhand. Um <laughs> She's the one that has that giant cow that seems to be making its way around the internet. People love that cow. Yeah. Martina McBride. Martina McBride, wonderful, wonderful tennis player. <laughs> Always just uh, just rushing the net. That's her thing. I'm going to rush the net to smash it back at you. You guys are going to have a tennis field out there? Uh, it's not a tennis field. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it a field? He means women. By the, <laughs> by the way, you ne it's a tennis court. And at no point <laughs> did you even need to add that. Do you sound, seriously, imagine what a dork you sound like. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You're a nerd. Uh, a tennis field. Pentatonix. <laughs> What's that? Pentatonix. Yeah, Pentatonix. It's a study... Of the earth moving. Okay. And, uh, but only in Pennsylvania. So, uh, Pentatonics, we're going to be hearing about what's going on. And you're doing this for Christmas? <laughs> I, is, that wasn't my move, as a matter of fact. Producers, the fucking suits get involved, you know? <laughs> Kelly Pickler. Kelly Pickler uh, is the pickle queen of American Idol. And she's going to act like she's never been to a big city before. You know what I mean? And the she's going to be like, I got on a subway and someone grabbed my pussy. <laughs> That's her kind of humor, oh, and I Pickler. like it, too. Because I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to grab her. And your last guest is Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel, as you know, has been a great friend to this show and kind of a junior grandfather to... To Juliet, an <laughs> honorary true. grandfather. Well, my mind is going through these changes. Well, it sounds like he put together a fantastic show. Um, I hope so. Star studded. I don't know who we're up against this year, but I'm a little nervous. I think it's Modern Family. <laughs> I don't want to fuck. I mean, they're great. Um. Are you checking the TV guide and saying what I'm doing? Modern, it's modern, I mean, what's that? Family, Goldbergs, American. We're going to get Party. fucking killed by those no. Jews. <laughs> <laughs> no Jews are going to want to watch us. I think they were out already. 
Ooh, 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 ooh. I have faith that these pentatonics is going to put you over, though. I hope so, Gail. I really do. You're also up against Empire and Riverdale, and those are new episodes. Oh, <sighs> Everything I said was a new episode, Chris. I didn't fucking say. All right, <laughs> easy, guys. <laughs> He's really angry with Hey, me. you know what? We all get a little crazy around this time of year, you know? <sighs> so much pressure. It's the holidays. And there's been a promo going for Modern Family where it looks like uh, the sister might be pregnant. So we'll see. Which, which sister? One? The Haley, the older sister. All right. What do you, uh, who's got her pregnant? The Dylan, the boyfriend that's returned. Bob Dylan? No, not Bob. He's too old for her. Dylan's back? Yeah, Dylan's back in a big way. I've, uh, I've dropped out a long time. Uh, I was in it, but apparently I missed last week when everything fucking happened. I'm going to get right home and on demand it, so I'm going to be ready for tonight's episode. <laughs> you got the Christmas tree lighting. Hey, did you get to see the girl that you wanted to see from the show? No, uh, she left earlier than I thought she was going to. What time was she here? 6 a.m.? <laughs> she was out of here at uh, 9.30. I thought she was here until 10.30. Uh, that's sad for you, because I know yeah, that I know. you've been in love with her for a while. I wanted to go up and say Ariel that. Winter or something? Ariel Winter. You've uh, pleasured yourself to her image, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Instagram, some just some paparazzi shots. There's one specifically I'm a big fan. Winter was warm with the jizz out of... Uh, Earl and I were up... Early today, we were up. John early was our joke, uh, so we sh- we could do the Jim and Sam show, and you know they haven't seen Earl since he's been back, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, but what I didn't realize is how much time is now in between Jim and Sam and us. Yeah, it used to be like an hour. And yeah, now it's a big chunk. There's they're usually in around ten ish, a little bit after ten, so that's like what four or five hours. How do you busy yourself? Well, I went and had a nice little breakfast. I went out with her own veto. And then I smoked and stood in front of Fox News and called my parents and going, you see me? I'm in the black coat. <laughs> and they're like, there you are <laughs> in New York. It looks crazy there. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. A lot of people uh, sent in pictures of them in their Bennington shirts and we've retreated it is that am i saying that right retreat it retweeted retweeted so earl tell people help me get their beautiful bennington shirt the brand new bennington shirt is available now at ibangshop.com that is ibangshop.com for your bennington t-shirt order your shirt put it on and we will retweet you that seems to be the thing (laughs) they love it now all of you are familiar with the Ron Bennington cupcake. Oh, yes. And that baby is a cash cow. I'm not going to lie to you. I'll be more known for that cupcake than anything else I've ever done in my life. Well, there was a robbery the other night. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think we have the break-in. And from what I understand, there's been a lot of robberies in uh, the north side of Chicago. Uh, but they broke in and stole the vault. Now, here's the thing. Why isn't the vault heavy enough that somebody can't pick it up? <laughs> the this vault is... should be bolted. <laughs> I mean, it's a vault, not a wallet. Um, but I personally, and with the show, so you guys will be chipping in too, have put up a reward of $5 for the, uh, the rest and conviction. And conviction. <laughs> Remember that before you come in for your five bucks. Um, I just don't want the first black person that they arrest. I'm not throwing that money out. Now, Earl, you made a face, but the video is black guys. Yeah. They, they had to. They, they robbed the wrong joint. They, 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 Apparently, they robbed the right joint. <laughs> they made off with it. But it these, uh, whoever though, these Cheech and Chongs, these modern day Cheech and Chongs, <laughs> doing very well for themselves. Now, how would they know where the vault was? Inside job, you're saying? Yeah. Mm. Inside job. Luckily, it was just filled with icing. <laughs> there was a, um, <laughs> when I was a kid down in uh, Limwood, PA, there was this guy place, I'll just call it Doc's, right? And it was a pharmacy, uh, and you could get food there. It was like really, really old school. And the pharmacist was an old guy, Doc, and he was he was the type of guy that he would like 
know people and give them credit and stuff like that. It was like, these kind of places don't exist anymore. Well, some people, some that I know, uh, they would break into the place and steal pills and enjoy themselves. Somebody went in, stole some pills, decided to eat the pills right there during the break-in, and then started to cook themselves a cheeseburger <laughs> where the pills had came in, they passed out, and the way that they were caught, the fire alarm went off because this fucking burning cheeseburger. <laughs> It's the worst drugstore cowboy. <laughs> Criminals are not as fucking good as you think, you know? No. That's why I am so, and I'm not making this up, and I'm not being facetious or ironic when I say this Paul Manafort thing is amazing to me because he's had the balls to say that he's taken the deal with Mueller and then they're feeding back what Mueller's planning to do to Trump to Trump. This is like the only guy that would do this is the dude on the blacklist. So, I mean, he makes yeah. moves like this. That's like a mastermind move. Yeah. I mean, it is pretty brilliant. And of course, the hopes and prayers is that the president of the United States will give him um, a pardon. Yeah, I've read that uh, yesterday. That that's that's the thing. That's the, the grand plan. Now is that here's, allowed? Yes, anything is. Yeah, he does have the right to do that. Now here's the funny thing, though. If he gives the pardon before the election, that could be bad for him. But then if he doesn't win the election, <laughs> this fucking guy is Ooh. not. I guess he could hope he gets a pardon within the last, you know, that lame duck time. Yeah, like it's yeah. the December or January period. These Holy stakes shit. are very exciting. So he does like what a year and a <laughs> half or something, depending on when the sentence is. He, well, yeah, but I mean, he's been in for what, a lot, but like about a year. You yeah. know, he's been in jail. Now the downside of that is he's seventy. You know what I mean? So two years when you're seventy is not like doing two years when you're twenty five. Yeah, it's when you a much, you know, it's a lot bigger chunk of the rest of your life. Yeah, when you hit seventy, that's like dog years, pretty much. Like everything is like seven. I believe forty <laughs> is dog years after that. <laughs> Seventy is like fucking bumblebee years. <laughs> I'm on dog years right now. You were dog years the day you were born. <laughs> you're forty. You fucking dirty dog. <laughs> thirty five. Yeah, yeah, Manafort's you're the <laughs> oldest thirty five I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Manafort's also the guy that got like sixty million from like a deal with the Ukraine, right? Like he's, he's yes, that's, and he's a guy who moves around, yeah. and that was dealing with the Russian oligarchs, and that's what all this shit's about. But when Manafort was um, uh, running Trump's campaign, I used to love to see him on TV because he was always like the casino manager who just came over after you lost. He goes, "I know what happened. I want you to take these two passes to the breakfast buffet." <laughs> <laughs> everything's taken care of. Don't even tip. I'm going to write my initial on the end of it. He always had that thing, you know, like you couldn't trust it. Um, But I, this is such a ballsy move that I absolutely am having so much fun reading this story. You got to respect <laughs> it. Yeah, I do. I just, because I'm like, oh, not a, you're like crazier than anybody I even know. <laughs> you know what I mean, like I know people who would take the deal. Yeah. Because he's dealing with, like, the gut, like, everyone's trying to get him. The highest yeah. part, IRS, FBI, he's dealing with all the fucking hardcores. And, you know, this is a guy who would just constantly have suits made for himself. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest with you, I never thought he looked that good. No. You know what I mean? For a guy who was having a suit a day made, <laughs> it, it still looked off the rack. So hopefully Manafort will be the next president. I, I feel like that can happen. He has Assange on this side. Supposedly. Assange is a weird guy. Do you see him as a good guy or a bad guy? I I, I thought he was a good guy at first, but as this thing has gone on, I think he's he's an asshole. Like with these... I see him most like the Joker. Like he just wants to watch the world burn. <laughs> <laughs> like he has no he has no side here. And the thing that he was in trouble for is 
biting the end off of a condom and knocking a girl up who thought she was having safe sex? Yeah, uh, he had sex without a condom or with a broken condom, something like that. That's what they were trying to get him for. And I think Sweden, Switzerland. Act to me is an accident. Yeah, and they're saying it's a, like, and to their laws, that's like a rape charge. And that's, so weird, right? Yeah, and that's what that's and that's why he's in the uh, the in Ecuador. Uh, ambassador's house because that was just like the only thing they could get him on just to like i don't know i mean like what was the point of that he was like i don't know what they're talking about he goes i fucking double condomed up (laughs) he goes i put a condom over my condom and then he said he put a rubber band around the fucking middle of his dick (laughs) just to tighten it up completely (laughs) that could have been the problem what is it what the fuck is wrong with the phones vito hey why don't you do that before the show? We do, but sometimes they remain fresh. Why don't you talk to the the maintenance people? Yeah, the, the maintenance people have been told numerous times. Just let me move up numerous someone you times. try to push like that. <laughs> They've been told numerous times. Yeah, I never was a big fan of him, but when I see like the whole world after everybody, I'm going to identify with that person. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think maybe like four or what, I don't know when, how long. I think he's been there six years or something. He's been there yeah. a while. I think if he would have gone out earlier, he could have beaten that charge. But now there's, no, if he leaves that place, he's fucked. Like it's the fuck. He's in jail, Chris. Everything that's <laughs> happening there is as bad as any jail. He doesn't have, uh, he's not allowed to move around. They cut his cable. They cut his Wi-Fi. He's just sitting in a fucking room. The only person that will talk to him is Pam Anderson. She loves him. Brings him cheeseburgers. Does she? Yeah, she brings him food from the outside. You imagine how good it must be to have a fucking cheeseburger when you've been in an embassy bedroom for fucking six... <laughs> Eating, like, I don't know, just empanadas constantly? I don't know. Who's okay. feeding them today? Because I heard the Ecuadorians hate them. Yeah, all right, so so uh, the the there's a new Ecuadorian president. The old Ecuadorian president was like, oh, about Assange was like, yeah, we were on your side. So like, yeah, you could definitely go to our embassy. So there's a new president who wants him the fuck out. He is, he's t- like he's tired of hearing about Assange. So England would arrest him immediately. I think so. Or like Interpol or something because <laughs> cause, cause the charges are in fucking Switzerland or wherever the hell uh, he got hit with. I, well, why not just go in there and go, Your Honor, my fucking condom broke. I mean, <laughs> this is the problems of the, man, of the big dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the prosecutor is swimming around in that fucking condom of his. <laughs> <laughs> is it a crime to have a large penis, sir? His fucking dick looks like a fly went into a tent. <laughs> Me on the other side. <laughs> is trying to push a whale through a fucking sausage tubing. He's sunk. I don't know. I think he's going to win it. I think he's going to win it going away. He is a cool underground lair. Uh, Eric, Jersey. Hey, what's up, Ron? Hey. Um, I, I heard uh, just a few minutes ago on Sirius XM 114 Fox News, yeah. Judge Napolitano said he went back and he reread the complaint and that part of the deal, he had to plead guilty in advance to state charges for something with the banks in New York, New Jersey, California, and a couple others. So Trump can only pop pardon, I guess that's why Mueller did it, on the federal level, He'd have to go through each governor, and among others, New York's not letting him go. So, so he, 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 he pled guilty in advance to even being charged on the state level of the same crimes. So Trump couldn't pardon all of that, just the federal stuff. Yeah, so that doesn't do him a lot of good at his age. No. No, he might have the long con going, but he's, he is a mastermind if he's got one. He's fucking fun. He is fun. I'll yeah. give him that. All right, peace out. Peace. And believe me, I mean, there's only one person I think who has a better legal mind than me today, and that's Black Girl. <laughs> He's a steel trap. Earl knows everything there is about New York landlord laws. Keeping them rent down. I really wanted Gail to be a lawyer. You did? Yeah, but by fourth grade, I'm like, well, that fucking dream is gone. <laughs> <laughs> my dad would say, I just don't want you to work with your back. Be a lawyer. Be a doctor. <laughs> like, that ain't going to happen, Where's John. The, like, <laughs> here's the thing it doesn't about, matter. His back was going to go out no matter yeah, what. The weight. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing about fucking parents. 
They act like it's fucking very easy to do these yes. things. <laughs> and it's a fucking long shot. And he only said that because he was like a bricklayer. Like he worked construction most and drove cab most of his life. So. When he worked. <laughs> yeah, wh exactly. When he worked. <laughs> he probably could have gotten some more work, but he chose not to. My mom uh, always told me she wanted me to be a forensic detective. And that it was to <laughs> see me get out of the car with sunglasses on. <laughs> Just buy him some shades. <laughs> Rent a car or get a license. <laughs> she said, I just want to see you get out of the car and say, what's the case here? But specifically a forensic detective. She just loves Can I tell you something? That <laughs> fucking TV. <that's> a, <laughs> that has rotted her brain. Wow. <laughs> to the point where she was What's pushing me to go to on? John Jay. <laughs> what was the, what did they play? Who are you? For the David Caruso song? Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, wow. Miami was, um, I th yeah, I think it was that. Yeah, yeah that's Every what he fucking said. Every single one's a different who song. No, hold on, it's, I think it's just the one. All right, so Plus, here, yeah. yeah. No. Every CSI <laughs> does one. There's Vito. Drive by Miami style. Yeah! I don't think so. You don't spend a thousand dollars on clothes that you're never gonna wear. Yeah! <laughs> hundred people throwing golf balls at the sight of a death. Those odds are very slim, aren't they? So the question becomes, Alex, was the mob sent to draw us to the crime scene? Or sent to destroy it? We only had one week before deliberations. No need now. The verdict is in. Millimeters <laughs> not from this gun. That's a monster caliber. It's gonna trade up to 48 layers of Kevlar. Something tells me this guy was planning something big. And not alone. Frank, it turns out the wave is not the only thing about to hit Miami. Five minutes. We call it speed dating. Our victim had 15 dates. Well, you know what they say, Frank. Speed kills. Not Miami. It's been 10 years since the Florida ship got pirated. Till now. <laughs> you don't fall three stories, get up and run away. You do. You've got something to hide. Stop it for a second. None of this stuff he says is true. <laughs> you know what they say. Speed kills. Oh my god, that last one was the best. That could have been you, fuck Vito. You're as dumb as that guy. This goes on for nine more minutes. <laughs> that could have been my life. Just get out of cars, get out of Lincolns, solving cases. What was the name of that show? NCIS Miami? CSI Miami. NCIS is a whole different <laughs> franchise, you fucking idiot. <laughs> it's the same show. You are stupid, man. Who yeah. fucking caught you being dumb? <laughs> no. You're nothing like TV guy. Look at you working with your back. <laughs> Backside. <laughs> Navy? There's a Navy version? That's what NCIS is. Oh, I thought it was that was JAG. <laughs> That's also Navy. Officer. That's what you do when you get home. <laughs> <laughs> what a great show. I never saw it, man. I never I saw an episode. I fucking used some kind of Roger Daltrey thing. <laughs> Or what did your parents want you to be? MTA. <laughs> I <laughs> swear nice. that's above they your say, That's a good yeah. job. Those are the lifer jobs. Good Pension bennies. jobs. Even though the life expectancy on the track worker is like 60. They want you to be, they didn't want you to be like a conductor. I mean, just want you know, my father would call it the good jobs that you know that always they, they paid even after you retired. Like anything with a good pension. And he, was, he just was convinced the MTA was the way to go. I'm agreeing with him. You with a pension now, Earl? Your, your life would be fucking set. Yeah, you get retired. Like, if I got a job, let's say at 22, I would have retired at 47. Can you imagine that? You'd be retired. Just you with some little gay kid fucking living down in Miami. <laughs> maybe fucking Port St. Lucie. Watching the fucking Mets. Solving murders. So great. You wow. come home, get that fucking dick. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say yeah. dick doesn't suck itself <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> he puts his fucking fingers in some banana pudding and straight up your ass you're fucking living the good life then brother that sounds nice 
I don't know about the fingers up the. Never You're out playing fucking miniature golf every afternoon. Nine holes. <laughs> Ten when he gets home. You mean that asshole? <laughs> <laughs> Get that fucking banana butt loop going and off you go to the races. A lot of this is banana flavor. Yeah. Yeah, that's the good life, man. I've been a retiree by now. Instead of what you're doing now, climbing those lonely stairs into that fucking studio apartment, noose is already pre-tied. Just a matter of what night you put your head in it. Kick the chair out. The first night, there's not good TV. He's basically the old man from Shawshank Redemption. All right, why don't you come over and help me light the tree this year? I'll put you on a fucking... Uh, on a ladder, and you go straight up and put that fucking Christmas star on. That would be epic. Ronnie B. Christmas. Oh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Finally get what I want to fucking do. I'm my own fucking Christmas special. Instead of a stupid Thanksgiving special like an idiot. <laughs> Earl and I on uh, the Sam and... Uh, Jim's show, we're going over how he missed his cue. Remember, Gail, what line he was supposed to come out on? Yes. So I've... he was like, I was ready. I was backstage. I go, Earl, backstage there. You got to come down the steps, back up the steps for me even to see you. That's a good 13 seconds. Yeah. That's why I didn't go with it. You weren't there. I want him at the top of the stairs. He's like, I was backstage with a microphone in my hand. I'm Miss like, who was producing this show? And then I remembered, nobody. It's a <laughs> runaway train. But other than that, it was a good show, right? I thought it was great. You thought it was great. I loved it. Despite. You loved it. You <laughs> fucked up the... That, uh, that my... <laughs> But you're able to get over that and be okay about it. Oh, no, I'm not okay about it, but I think the show as a whole, take it as a whole, was great. My fuck-ups will haunt me. It looks like you're fine with it. <laughs> That's the last thing I have. Like, let's say this, Jumping Jack Flash, right? Yeah. If if the mic is cut when he's saying watch it, right? Yeah. Would you still say it went good? No, that would say, that would say it went badly. This is worse than that. But whatever. Let's not focus on that anymore. And Gail, you you claim that uh, 2019 is the year without stress. Yes, that's what I'm trying to get. A happy Bennington show. As a lie? Are you saying that? Or? No, as a truth. <laughs> hey, here's one of my favorite things on the internet today. Ted Cruz grew a beard... And yet people are saying it couldn't technically be called a beard. Now, uh, Miami Vice, you guys are familiar with, right? Yes. Did John Don Johnson, did, was that a beard or not? That was like a five o'clock shadow. So that's not a beard? No. Does Ted Cruz have a beard? <laughs> <laughs> that is not a beard. No. Well, it looks that like is... he grows hair everywhere but on his chin. <laughs> Fucking shit looks ridiculous. That's what you do when you're depressed. <laughs> yeah, that looks like you've lost hope. Not like you're growing a beard. I might say, look, I'm not saying anything, but is your wife sleeping with someone else? <laughs> she has to be. What you said was unforgivable. Yesterday. Unforgivable. Yeah. Vito has a beard. I have a beard, a neck beard. But and it's much it's it's heavier than fucking whatever the hell Ted Cruz is trying to grow. Maybe it's coming in gray or white and makes it a little lighter. Why didn't he wait till the Christmas break? I don't yeah. know. And then by the time he comes back to begin the year, he's grown in a little bit. It's full. <clears throat> it is strange though, because you can see as you described, it looks like there's nothing on the chin. So it does seem like if he took the time he could get like the Van Buren look going pretty well. And who wants that? <laughs> How dated. Now, Just Earl, have you ever grown fur. a beard? Uh, I grew one in 2009 when um, during the playoff run. How's it look? I, I looked ridiculous. <laughs> I, I did, it didn't come in all the way in. 
it, it kind of looked like that, which was not a beard at all. Mine comes in kind of gray to white, and I was told it looks like I run a Minnesota crime syndicate, <laughs> which I'm happy with. I kind of feel like I look like the snowman that was uh, telling the Rudolph story. All right. <laughs> no reason why that guy told the story rather than somebody who was involved in the story. <laughs> Here's a story I wasn't even around for. Hey, Vito. He's pretty much like the guy who's just like, beans, beans, beans. Don't get me started on beans. Do you know that that's uh, Patricia Arquette's father? Is it really? Yeah. I had no idea. No, when I grow a beard, it looks like um, I'm from the Middle East. It's really, it comes in very wiry, like a full beard. Like when I didn't shave, I didn't shave for like seven months once. That's the beard that we uh, we shaved off and taped to uh, Mark Zito's face. Oh, I forgot that. That was one of <laughs> the things that freaked people out more than anything was having someone else's beard glued to his face. <laughs> oh, yeah, Have you ever cool. seen that, Gail? No, I haven't seen it. Uh, it was a, years ago, and Vito was uh, Zito was very young at the time, so the beard itself looked <laughs> frightening. See if we can't retweet that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I forgot how big my beard was. <laughs> this looks crazy and on how him. How young his face is, <laughs> and he he got a real Tim Tuttle fucking hillbilly look about him. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, I feel bad we won't have that song tonight. I don't need a lot for Christmas. Oh, no All more I this needs year. a lot for Christmas. <laughs> um Now Jada Pickett mom uh Smith's mom is questioning her marriage to Will Smith, and here's why. Will Smith and his uh, wife, Jada, no longer say that they're man and wife, but they say they have a marriage contract. Mm. So they aren't saying they're man and wife, but they're saying we will never get a divorce and we'll always live in the same house. Hmm. I've kind of always suspected they had a bit of uh, an arrangement. An open marriage, we used to say in the old days. I don't think mm -hmm. they do anymore. I don't see anything wrong with that. <clears throat> you would do that with your wife, then? Not with my wife. Well, I mean, it depends on the wife. <laughs> wait, if, You're wait, married, Chris? I don't have a wife. How many wives do you have? <laughs> well, it could be. That's fine, too. That's refined? Fine. <laughs> I think uh, the mom needs to chill out. Stay out of her fucking business? Exactly, yeah. I'm sure she's living very well, thanks to the Smiths' uh, <laughs> fortune. <laughs> Just the Smiths. <laughs> Not, is her last name Pinkett? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That yeah, was the, her original the, last name. Pinkett Smith's fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Here she plays Fish Mooney or whatever fucking oh, yeah. one to take. <laughs> In the meantime, he's basically Scientology now. Now... Earl, if you were going down the street, right, and you saw uh, perhaps Gail with another man, would you alert her man to that? No. Now, say this. Thank you, you saw her man walking down the street mm. with an hourglass figure next to her and a very ditzy blonde, like, pee hee hee, <laughs> you're so funny. Would you alert Gail? No. What? You just stay out of it. I would stay out of it. <laughs> what about you, Chris? <clears throat> Depends on who I'm closer to. Well, you're. This is real life already. Me, you're you closer to Gail. Me. I, would, I would tell Gail. I would say I saw I saw that person <laughs> with a young blonde lady. Would you really? I would. I would say something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would definitely say something to Gail. Now let me uh, let me ask uh, Vitz. Uh, Vitz. A beats. Yeah, Gail. Gail's the homie, so I'm telling Gail right away. Like, not even a second to think about it. I would think about Maybe it. Maybe even a picture, just to show her everything. Oh. That's too far. You two are Proof. little fucking little chatterbox. <laughs> hey, that's... <laughs> it's my ride or die. My boys take care of me. I'm old school. I go, hey, I don't know what their business is. Is that the, is that the way you are, Earl? Or are you like, I don't want anybody... 
aiming this towards me. No, I don't know the dynamic. You're a fucking survivor, is what you are, Earl. I don't know the dynamics of the relationship, so it's, it, frankly, it's none of my business. So why What if I- you specifically heard me specify the dynamics of my relationship? What if you knew for a fact that I did not uh, have an open marriage? Or what if this, Earl? Like you saw that they had the baby in the carriage, right? And the dumb blonde lady was running with the baby in the carriage, pushing it through traffic. Would what? you tell Gail? <laughs> Okay, that that changes things. That changes a lot. If I knew the dynamics of the relationship and I saw this woman dragging the baby around like... All right, what if you saw Chris Stanley's girl with someone getting felt up? Jesus. All right, getting mm-hmm. felt up. Over but the shirt the stuff, thing, but tweaking. By another woman. Oh. By another woman. Would you tell Chris? I would keep my mouth shut. I would say this. <clears throat> Chris, yeah. I jizzed all over your girlfriend yesterday because of the act she was putting on. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Ron. What if you saw Chris tying his woman to the fucking tracks? <laughs> Would you start videotaping and hoping to sell it to Dateline? I would contact the authorities as soon as possible. What authorities? Oh, come on. I mean, if she, if it's with the intention, of, the intention of doing bodily harm what to her. What if it's track play? Track what if they're play. into track play? What if he can't come unless there's a big shiny light and a fucking horn in front of him? You gotta watch the third rail though, dude. Third rail is right where he goes up to. He has his fucking cockhead about an inch and a half away from the That's the rail. exciting part. He just lets pressure get. Yeah. What if what if this pre cum causes my death? Why do you have to say pre cum? I really you think it's so really far dislike that. It's disgusting. That. By the way. Your pre cum, cum, and post cum are all of the same texture <laughs> and quantity. <laughs> Ew, I don't know why it grossed me out more to think of him saying pre cum than actual cum. It just I really agree. I find pre cum. I, I am not a person who gets gnarled by something. Yeah. I don't like to turn pre cum. I like it. That's I think, it's, it's, I think pre cum's fine. Like, that, it's much nicer than jizz cum. <laughs> Jizz gum. No one says. No one says jizz gum. Let's face it, pre cum is useless. It's yeah. Not even a good feeling. Ew. Yeah, it's gross, Chris. It's like I like it when so the, much the pre-cum works. Comes out. My watery. <laughs> <laughs> it's like syrup, you know. It's a nice. This is the opposite. <laughs> now I know you don't know what pre cum means. There's not a thick pre cum. That's not, impossible. No, you're right. Now it's not syrup being like uh, the thickness, <laughs> but it's a little sticky, like uh, like regular jizz. <laughs> <laughs> what honestly. happened to calling it jizz gum? <laughs> J- you know, like the regular jizz gum. <laughs> it's so gross. Yeah, I'm not a person who wants to limit free speech, but I don't like pre-cum. <laughs> no, that, I don't uh, what is the worst it. word for you to hear? Any kind of word, doesn't matter what. Um, to me, the, uh, for me, the N-word. and That's my favorite. That's your pre-cum? <laughs> and, uh, uh, cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's... That's literally not true. That that bothers you. You it, it, that it's grown is worse to, than pre cum. It, it, it has grown to really bother me. Why the thought of another man being on top of uh, no, it, a loving just, partners? It, just the content and the and the <laughs> the intent behind the word because it's never you, that. It's you always, are so homophobic. It's, it's ridiculous. No, it's not homophobic. Yeah, it I'm is. just saying, like when they say, like you stupid, you know. That's that, almost like the N word for you. That that's vicious. That uh, it's the exact opposite. Yeah, but of you know Earl's right about something. No one ever is like talks about their uncle and be like, no, 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 no. I'm not anti-gay. My uncle's a cocksucker. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, the first time I heard the term motherfucker when I was a little kid, I just started swinging. Sure. Yeah, I'm like, you talking about my mother? That's intense shit. <laughs> And then after that, people were like, no, 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 you can't take it that way. <laughs> it's not but literal. But that's literally what you said. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that. It's just for effect. It's fun to piss people off.
Uh, the word lagoon is always weirded me out. I guess that's like a fucking bean or something, but oh. it's it's nasty. <laughs> a lagoon like a- is like a little bay. Like fucking oh. Gilligan's Island, okay. they were on the lagoon. Yeah, is stop. that what you said, lagoon? Yeah, lagoon. I don't like that word. Are you it's saying a- lagoon? L- lagoon. Are you can- lagoon. Yeah, but- <laughs> You're saying it the well, wrong way. Well, you said way. like a bean. You mean a legume? Like oh, yeah. A no, that's a okay. legume. Legume. <laughs> so the word that bothers you most, you don't even know it. I, I just got confused with lagoon. <laughs> but legume is uh, is really the one that fucking, I don't like it. I like the way it's spelled. I like the way it sounds. The oom um part is really nasty. <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking nasty. And quite frankly, your special needs. <laughs> I Vito, what do you what do you do you get mad at what? The D word? Huh? The D <laughs> word? The w. I mean like I don't like when people use those Italian slurs. <laughs> um the word doo is something <laughs> uh, <laughs> my fr- I have certain friends that use it and it's the only type of people I know that still use this term and it fucking bothers me so much the word doo infuriates me do you like the way black people say I do I do <laughs> that's all my, that's like Ian and uh, my friend Chuck they all say doo instead of shit or poop <laughs> it's just like just say shit dude do they say I have to go take a doo <laughs> No, they'll just be like, oh, it smells like doo-doo in here. (laughs) Girl, he is right that only black people say doo-doo as adults. You hear me arguing? Yeah. (laughs) They do use it as that all the time. Oh, my people. For some reason, doo-doo is more disgusting than I agree 100%. I don't even, uh, I remember we had a neighbor that said crap, and I'm like, oh, she's, it was like the mom, and she would always say, oh, crap. I'm like, well, that's so much worse than shit. <laughs> oh. Now, Jay, what gets to you? Uh, it's hard for me to even say it, but it's also shit related. But if somebody refers to it like as a nugget, like a nugget of shit, <laughs> that like I could throw up just thinking about somebody saying that. Who would just say I had a little nugget? People say it. Really? People say it. it's so disgusting. They say like nug sh- for short, like, like a nugget. Like a shit, shit nugget. They're Ugh. horrific. They are horrific. Uh, charitybuzz.com. You could be here co hosting the Bennington show with us. The, Benny, uh, the bidding ends Wednesday, December 12th. And the brand new Bennington shirts are available. At the iBangShop.com. Perfect, perfect Christmas uh, present. The new Bennington shirt. iBangShop.com. Why don't we take a a little break here, kids? Now, I say that knowing that uh, Vito looks like he's running over here (laughs) with... Some live reads. We'll hear them soon from outside the studio. (laughs) Here comes the W word and the D word at the same time. Don't blow up your fucking heart. Or Nate. Uh, uh, Gail, I wanted to tell you about this. I don't know whether you've heard much, but Dish is proud to bring you the best in country music with their original concert series. Hometown, and on November 29th at 9 p.m. in the East, Dish is heating up your holidays with one of the hottest live performances of the year. Don't miss CMA-nominated Lanco live on their Hallelujah Nights tour exclusively with Dish. Catch every second of the live performance on Dish Studio Channel 102 or stream it on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash dish. Hometown is a Dish original concert series celebrating the importance of where we come from and the stories that connect us. Before the live performance, tune into Dish Studio Channel 102 to watch an exclusive hometown interview with Lanco as they reveal the story behind their record-breaking debut album, Hallelujah Nights, and their number one hit, Greatest Love Story, followed by the entire hometown concert performance live November 29th, 9 p.m. in the East only 
on Dish Studio Channel 102, streaming on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash dish. Dish is proud to serve hometowns all across the country. And thanks to Lanco, they are proud to bring you the best country music too. Learn more at dish.com slash hometown. Dish, tuned into you. Faction Talk 103, it's the Bennington Show. Try to get a little closer. Ha, ha. Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer. Today, over a million people use the amazing Ring video doorbell to help protect their homes. Ring knows home security begins at the front door, but it doesn't end there. So now they're extending that same level of security to the rest of your home with the Ring Floodlight Cam. Just like Ring's amazing doorbell, Floodlight Cam is a motion-activated camera and floodlight that connects right to your phone with HD video and two-way audio that lets you know the moment anyone steps on your property. See and speak to visitors, even set off an alarm right from your phone. With Ring's Floodlight Cam, when things go bump in the night, you'll immediately know whether it is, whether you're home or away. The Ring Floodlight Cam lets you keep an eye on your home from anywhere. Ring Floodlight offers the ultimate in home security with high visibility floodlights and a powerful HD camera that puts security in your hands. With Ring, you're always home. Save up to $150 off a Ring of Security kit when you go to ring.com. Slash comedy. Ring.com slash comedy. That's ring.com slash comedy. Bennington is back and Ron is performing with Rich Boss and Jim Florentine this Saturday, December 1st at Treehouse Comedy at Bobby V's in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Ron Bennington's coming home to Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Go to treehousecomedy.com for tickets. This is Faction Talk 103, the Bennington Show. It's the Bennington Show. Uh, lighting the tree here in New York City. And I'll be doing that tonight around 8 o'clock on the East. Uh, but I want people to know this is, is it New York's tree. This is America's tree. And more importantly, North America's tree. So that's Canada, Mexico, and what some people call Central America, where Chris's people come from. Mm-hmm. Costa Rica is not actually a continent; they are part of North America. Yeah, they, yeah, they're they're no continent. They're just they just get the uh, the title of Central America. That's just because that's well, they're in between the two big land masses. Yeah, but kind of the taint between. The I got news two. for you: if we don't take them, I don't think South America will. I'm sorry to even say that. <laughs> now. It's time to do Dish with our own Vito Khaleesi. And I wanted to take a, a time just to ask you guys, is this segment working? I like to <laughs> want to do that occasionally called, is this say seg- It's the most underproduced thing I've ever been involved in in my life. Well, I think it works when we bring up his Italian heritage. That's when I think it's at its best. That doesn't work when we do it. It's other people. One other guy in particular <laughs> who does it. But Earl, you know production. Can you believe how underproduced this segment is? Yeah, considering it's gossip, it's... Yeah. It's, you know, what's happening. I mean, there the should be the actualities. Thing. There should be music drops. I even sent him to the old East Side Dave stuff. Where we'd have a little gossip, a little. Now all this time la- after it, right? I mean, we still know those things, old friends, old friends. But we can't bring up anything from this thing. The dish has, and I'll put it in NASA terms, yeah. it has exploded on the launch pad with people inside. Every, so everyone's dead or burning alive. We believe, or else they've been put into another dimension. That's pretty cool. I hope that's what happened to them. So, Vito, we're talking, uh, you just walked in on us here, but Gail and Chris and I and Earl were talking <laughs> Wait, about what? Yeah. pulling the plug this. on this fucking bit of But yours. I got really good dish today. This is some fucking spicy dish. Just the fact you should have a spicy you, dish drop. <laughs> oh yeah, and say it fucking in it, right? That's the exact <laughs> opposite of broadcast. This is some 
<laughs> fucking shit. I, I, I guess what? I know it's not. No, it I've is. done too many dishes. <laughs> maybe like, maybe just a drop where it sounds like someone has agita or yeah, something. Yeah, I am tired have to be of doing the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> why, why can't you do like dirty the hot dish. peppers? You know what I mean? And here's the eggplant report. We need a and dishwasher. And stuff that's gummy. That's what we fucking What's need. that? We need a dishwasher. So instead of waiting for when you could get it in, you sandwich it in between my stuff? Yeah. Here's what I'm saying. Okay. He's never going to come up with anything, but he will ruin whatever he can. All right. Why don't we start your dish? Let's dish. Yeah. Put on your headphones. Vito's got the news. Let's dish to the gossip they're saying on the radio. This week's dish segment is presented by Dish. Get extra action with NFL Red Zone from NFL Network on Dish at no extra charge. Dish tuned into you. To learn more, call one eight four four. Call Dish or go to Dish.com. Now, Gail, correct me if I'm wrong. When he mm-hmm. used to do this, he was a cute girl from Trinidad. <laughs> That's Tobago. true. Yes, that was. A transition. Uh, I uh, shared an elevator with her today, but her coworker talked the entire time. Really? Oh. Yeah. It was really nice, though, because at least her coworker had seen me do stand up, heard me on jam. Where, let's face it, uh, I'm not going to get that kind of feedback. No. <laughs> I don't even get it from my own fucking producers. All right. Knock me down with this. It's so good. Right, this, is, this is the reason why my intro was OJ Simpson centric today. OJ's former manager, Norman Pardo, says OJ did not act alone, and he's producing a documentary about Dude, this. This is so old, I heard it on Jim and Sam today. I thought it was this morning. Yeah. So, forget OJ. No, I've already reacted to it. I did, I did a line, I bet it's a pulling guard. We all had a nice big laugh. <laughs> Is there right. something you would like to say about it other than the fact? No, I was just I was just bringing that up. That's why you're not a gossip. A gossip doesn't say here's a fact. All right, I got. He enjoys the juiciness behind it. Here's some juicy. This is some juicy. You've dish. already moved past your number one story. You're missing what I'm saying. Go to number two. Number two, Robert De Niro talked about his new fresh divorce. Now here's the dish. Here, he talked about his two children and um, the wife and how they divorced and he loves his kids and everything. I knew his two kids. And I had met the wife a few times. One, Robert De Niro would come in looking very miserable all the time. I've heard from numerous um, housekeepers in the building he has <laughs> have run out crying. <laughs> Jesus. This is actually too intimate of a dish for me. So you have an inside source with his housekeeper. I yeah. do. Because <laughs> you, does, does his housekeeper say, are you cleaning for me? Huh? Are you cleaning for me? <laughs> And um, yeah, he would come in with a. He would come into the place. I knew him two places. I knew the housekeepers who would say all these other housekeepers would run out crying, and uh, not, but they don't know why. Just he was apparently not a pleasant man to work for. Yeah, uh-huh. he likes it clean. He likes it clean and would get very mad. Spotless <laughs> and um, spotless. That's what I'm asking for. And I knew his two kids because I. Went to sports camp with them, and they were bad at sports, so there's some fucking gossip for you guys. All right, let's just face it. He doesn't want to do this. He's even no, laughing at the fact that there's some fucking gossip for you guys. Miss it's- Lippy's car is blue. <laughs> Billy likes soda. Rita Moreno is returning to the West Side Story franchise because... You know what this should be called? Page nine. <laughs> I get off the info off the post. Page six. Is Richard Johnson still there? Yeah. yeah he is. <laughs> this is page six plus another three hours. <laughs> page six, TMZ. But the call funnels through me. I give you the best dishes from those restaurants. I'm sorry, but this is going to be your last week doing this. No, come on. Listen to this Rita Moreno thing. Maybe it's Vinay from this point on. No, Vinay can't give you the dish like I do. <laughs> I've been looking for a chance to get Vinay on this fucking show for how long now? I made weeks in a row by probably like seven weeks at this point. 
Do you want to? I get feel like kidding? I don't even know Vinay because he's so banned. Is he banned or you just fucking? I just hide him back there, and I don't let him come out because he doesn't listen to me. All right. Let me hear your bed. But matter of fact, this is the first interesting story of the day. <laughs> it's a Vinay dish. Sean Mendez, popular pop star, just ripping up the charts. Says he uh, always has to... one of his songs, Theo. I know the name, but I don't know. I, I couldn't I tell you it, why I, Mendez. If song. you would have said, what does Sean Mendez do? I would have said actor in the Twilight series. <laughs> <laughs> he says he is always on a mission to prove he's not gay. He told us the rolling, <laughs> That's rolling not twenty eighteen. Yeah. yeah. And that YouTube commenters in particularly are rough on him. They're rough on everybody. But especially yeah. him and the gay thing. What do you yell? They no. call everybody gay. But he's not taking it well. He doesn't want to be considered gay. I which... understand that all you're doing <laughs> is reiterating your initial report. People would like to have a conversation about this, Vito. Not have you yell back, didn't you hear my headline? <laughs> huh? Pasta. No, it's not pasta. It's dish. I think it's it's probably a weird thing to bring up. Like, I'm I'm stuck always trying to seem like I'm gay. I feel like just let it go. That's the best way to handle it. Yeah, why wouldn't you say it doesn't matter whether I'm fucking gay or not? It's none of your fucking business. It's a weird time. Remember, to- that's what Bane did. Bane is gay? Oh, Tom Party. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know his real name. Yeah, he, he said, Nobody cares that I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> How could I suck a cock with this thing over <laughs> Yeah, when he was asked if he was gay, he said, like, yeah, of course I've kissed men. What kind of actor hasn't kissed men? John Men uh, Sam Mendes said this? No, Tom Hardy said that. <laughs> Sounds like Sean Mendes is gay. <laughs> uh yeah, he's I- gay. <laughs> Why does he just walk around with a chick? Apparently, he was also on uh, Taylor Swift's Instagram, and she like put makeup on him, and that also fueled the fires that he is, uh, in fact, <laughs> gay homosexual. Men can wear makeup. It's 2018. Shawn Mendes is just trying to fucking let everyone know he's a homophobe. I've worn concealer before. For what? Like I had a pimple in high school, and I just Aww. put some little concealer Sad. on it. Uh, I didn't. I thought it was fine, but my mom said just do it. And then I got made fun of ruthlessly for it when I got to school. Now, yeah. what's the new um, Pete Davidson gossip? It's on the eye bang right now. What came up today? What came up today mm-hmm. was that uh, it's uh, she uh, she put out a trailer for her, the video for her new um, song, Thank You Next, and uh, she makes a reference to uh, the breakup. If she makes it in the song, though. Yeah, but that like she makes makes a joke in the trailer. This isn't the song. It's well, can we oh, say gotcha. it? yeah. Here's the trailer. How long is the trailer? One time on Twitter, seconds. I heard Ariana was pregnant, so I got pregnant so we could be pregnant at the same time. Turns out it was just a rumor. Ariana Grande told me my hair looks sexy pushback. She's not wrong. Ariana broke off an engagement, so I found a guy to propose to me. And I broke off an engagement. I heard she's a lesbian now and dating some chick called Aubrey. It's fucking sick. I heard if you record her snoring and play it backwards, it sounds like Fantasia. Ariana says, honest to God, knock me out. So I decided to punch myself in the face. It was awesome. I guess it was the breaking off the engagement joke, but it wasn't really a joke. It was just... Yeah. It was just that she's broken off an engagement before. I I will tell you, though, I'm a big fan of Thank You Next. (laughs) That song is hot fire. All right, so this is what people are saying. She made a joke about Pete, right? But she made Pete pull a sketch where he joked about them breaking off, and she's bitched about it. So uh, I would put this in as La Di Da. I haven't heard the song Next yet. Is it good? Yeah, thank you. Next, uh, it's pretty catchy. I'm I'm into Did it. Did she go like this? Thank you, Andy. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll give like you a, a little gossip I heard about this. Okay. Uh, you know this? Uh, well, 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 it ties it. But are you familiar with a movie called Star Is Born? They've done the yeah. fourth reboot. Yes, I. Yes. Am. There is a backlash to that because they claim the movie takes the position. That rock is superior to pop music. And we were supposed to look down on um, 
her for picking pop music over his kind of outlaw country, right? And I said, yes, I did take that position in the film because I've taken that position in life. Don't we assume that country music is uh, better than pop from an artistic point of view? Absolutely. Uh, and you could say the same of rock. And I would even say the same of hip hop. When a hip hop artist does pop hip hop, I think people tend to mock that. And he makes the point in the movie, like when he's talking to her after, like the, I think the SNL appearance. Like yeah. she, he was like, "You've cha- basically said you've changed. You used to care about the, the songwriting, right? And instead, now she's just you know doing the with pop the dancers. Act. Yeah, with the dancers. Yeah. Well, the point is, pop is popular, and nobody is going to say the sellout music is the better music artistically. If you're doing it for money. That's obviously going to be, and that's what pop music is. Uh, well, the thing about pop music is it's popular with children. You know what I mean? Like, that's why it's not considered the best music. Like, no one ever says, nursery rhymes are the best poetry that's ever been done. <laughs> it's not known to have substance. Like, it's not, nobody's ever said Thank pop you. music has substance. So the whole purpose of, oh, you're making uh, this country music that's, like, real, has a meaning behind it, it makes sense to go, oh, you're just leaving this for fucking pop music that's just a hook and, and a song? And quite frankly, there can be a pop song that does have substance, but as she proved in that SNL thing, it was about the dance moves. It looked like shit. Yeah, it looked terrible. I don't care what anybody says. And it's made to be popular. Like when, uh, after Razor's first two albums, uh, they started trying to make pop music. They became obsessed. Rivers Cuomo became obsessed with making like a perfect pop song. And the fucking music got worse. Well, to me, Pinkerton is his finest album. Mm-hmm. It is. It isn't. <laughs> it is. It joking. truly is. All Weezer is pop. All. 100% of Weezer is pop. I don't think we, he was intending to. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so even you, even a fucking pop lover like you agrees that the pop people are wrong. Well, no, I, I like, like you brought up the hip hop point. I despise pop hip hop. Like, I don't like Drake. I'm very against what he stands for in the hip hop community. Um, but I, I completely agree that it should be fine in a, in a movie, in a, in a fucking movie that's been made well, the, the the thing of the movie was to say, they're saying, like, fuck you for acting like she's a sellout for making pop music. Fuck you, dead John Norman Howard Speedway. <laughs> Jackson, Maine. <laughs> now, see, I like, I mean, when I was younger, my first real job was driving a, a jazz piano player around the South, and I would have a green book with me. Okay. And that green book would tell you where it was safe for what they called at that time a Negro to eat, go to the bathroom, or use a hotel. That's what Green Book means. Did he ever turn on his music and start making pop? That would have been terrible, wouldn't it? Yeah. That would be awful. Now, Earl's a big pop music fan. Yes. I'm, I'm a rock and roller, but I like pop when there's some substance behind it. Like, people considered a guy like Bacharach and Phil Spector pop music, but there was a real, there was a real drive behind it. There was yeah, some real well, sophistication behind it. No one is saying that it. either one of those people aren't geniuses and fantastic, but that's why I said you can be, there can be substance. The Beatles are a perfect example. That's pop music. I think pop became its own genre though, and before it was like just rock was pop. Music. And I would now, disagree with that. Oh uh, well, I, I would think, disagree. I think now pop is just a thing. Like you go to be a pop star, you don't go to be like. A- yeah, but I think that was true. Even of how much is that doggy in the window? I don't. They thought like, hey, it got away from me. I really tried to make <laughs> this song. You know, like it's hard to believe, but everybody in the country loved that song. When it came out. <laughs> sure. And like, I go, does it represent something? No, it's literally how much is that doggy in the window? I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Have what, it, uh, now, have you seen Star is Born? I've, I've not seen it yet. I'm and, very interested. Have you seen Green Book? 
No, but I just got the new AMC A-listers thing where yeah. I could get to see three movies a week, so I'm going to see it soon. Oh, you back into that lunacy again? Yeah, because the movie pass one, you couldn't buy tickets ahead of time and shit. It was garbage, okay? You and they fucking me tried off. me to get me <laughs> to buy it. AMC you A-listers? Did try to sell that to all of us. I'm going to sell you guys on A-listers now. I'm, I'm living a great life. I get to skip the concession line. By the way, I was up in, in, and not have food? Good for you. <laughs> Your toes will thank you. <laughs> I was up in the middle of the night watching The Graduate last night. I hadn't seen it in a while. That is the most nerve-wracking. I mean, there's not a non-nervous moment yeah. in that movie. Up until the last second, the last shot of the movie. It, it's nerve-wracking, the last shot. And he's a fucking weirdo. And I always remember when I was younger, like, yeah, go for it. And now I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you, young man? <laughs> Why don't you chill life? the fuck out? <laughs> So what? You fucked your mom's friends. That's forgivable. <laughs> it's a good thing. Was that you making that loud noise, Vito? No, it was Chris. Okay. It was definitely Vito. No, um, it was Jewel into the <laughs> microphone. Let's go, Vito. Let's do, get in. Kevin Hart and his wife threw a Cowboys and Indians party for their son. And uh, people on the internet are outraged, saying it's cultural appropriation and that you should not be mocking Somebody's. Literally, he's not white, a white cowboy, or an Indian. That really is. <laughs> True, it's doubly. <laughs> Although, did you ever hear, Earl, how many black cowboys that there were? Yeah. There was tons heard, of them. There was tons of black cowboys. And it's very rare for you to hear a black cowboy story. Django's the only one. Dude. Dude. Don't even. Don't even. <laughs> but, uh... I don't, I think you should not just stay away from the Native American thing at this point. It's pretty just, it's pretty straightforward that if you do it, it's going to offend people. Like, I know um, uh, Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell had to apologize for an episode he did of that show 20 years ago because people were offended by the headdress and everything. Well, that was ridiculous. That was a bad episode. <laughs> he goes through and be like, find out that he's like 1 16th Native American or something. But then he shows up in the big headdress. It's a very uncomfortable thing. I, I, I have fly. news for you, though. Me and my friends, when I was a very little kid, played Cowboys and Indians all the time. This is a the gigantic change in culture over the course of my lifetime that people would think because this thing actually happened. I mean, would it be wrong to play North against the South? Uh, are you? I guess it's because when you do Cowboys and Indians, you're like you're more than likely mocking them by like doing the the mouth thing or maybe putting on face paint, and it's kind of taking that and making a game out of it. Yes, but your children, adults, aren't doing this. <laughs> now, by the way, the Cowboys just played the Redskins on fucking TV last week. <laughs> I think that's probably more offensive, offensive than children using their imaginations. On Thanksgiving. Or imagination's, <laughs> as now, I'm forced to say now. Was it, was it a circumstance where Kevin Hart and his wife were dressed up as Indians? Yeah, or was it just it was like, like the kids? Everybody in the party, even the adults, were, were, dressing, were dressed up. They're rich people. It's a theme party. Everybody loves a theme party. Why can't we just be glad that we have very rich, ridiculous black people now? No, I, <laughs> Let me I, see the picture. I, was, I see Kevin Hart with a hat on. I see another kid with a hoodie. <laughs> this is fucking... A couple people are wearing blankets. No one see One kid has a huge water gun. Come on. The ban I think You're the fucking mad about nothing. The bandanas on the other children, I guess, signify cowboy team. Uh, you see that the, the son in the middle. All right, the, it would be up to white people to be offended by cowboys, <laughs> and we're not. <laughs> I know a former dish correspondent told me that she dressed up as a Native American for Halloween. <laughs> I will say, though, that these, I feel like these, the blankets that they're wearing look very, like, uh, culturally appropriate. Like, it seems like yeah. it's not, like, an over-the-top character of Native Americans. Does that help things? Yeah, I don't think this one is the least um, offensive one, but just stay away from it because people are going to get mad. I don't see anything offensive with it because it's not like they're wearing the face paint or the headdresses or the things that would typically make people mad, but just stay away from it. Why even risk it if it might piss people off? What, so this is where we are. We're into self uh, self fucking uh, suspending our own First Amendment. That's what you're saying. Don't say something. You can make people uh, look. I remember when I was a kid and I've never really even talked about this publicly, but I'm willing to today. They took 
of the whole Cherokee Nation. And they locked us on this reservation. Took away our ways of life. The tomahawk and the bow and knife. And taught English to our young. All the beads we made by hand are nowadays made in Japan. Cherokee people! Really, all that time you couldn't find it, Earl. All that fucking time. All right, move on. I don't see anything wrong with this, and I'm more concerned about a young man like Vito, who's like, look, even though there's, there's nothing wrong with this, Let's not do it. We could be in trouble. Well, there's. Well, it's not that there's nothing wrong with it. It's that someone says that there is, and you have to take their word for it, right? Like, you're like, we wouldn't find this offensive, because why would we? Like, there's nothing that would offend white well, people about it. The, uh, the cowboy part? No, that's not offensive. We look like shit-kicking cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> I, why don't we not show the way we are now? Driving trucks. <laughs> <laughs> so these kids just have ear bunnies on. <laughs> that makes no fucking sense. Just ear bunnies. Bunny ears. <laughs> Why can't kids ear play? Bunnies. Like if a kid is turning around and the kids are playing Vietnam because they just saw a fucking thing. What am I going to do? Scream at them? Hey, people went to Vietnam. I guess the thought is just that the, the, the adults should know better in the situation. The kids Why can do what they the want. the fuck? Who cares? It's a cowboy and Indian party. Do you fucking think it's okay to dress up as a, a witch? There are people who are witches in this country that are nothing like that stereotype. Is it okay to dress up like fucking reindeer? Uh-uh. That's Norway. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, like, bringing up the witch, it is it's weird that people don't get offended by that because they've been, that's a large group of people that were tortured for years. Yes, but, but well, you're saying there's not enough of them for you to fucking count talent to. The, the second you can, you, you quit. You move out. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, it's, no, I just You're don't... trying to survive. You're trying to get by. I get it. I get it. Who else is trying to survive? Oh, stop it. It's Jameis <laughs> Winston, who just reached a settlement deal in the assault case with the Uber driver. There's no definite um, number on the settlement yet, but... Two million dollars, I bet. They grabbed her breasts or something, right? Vagina. Right. Oh, Over Jesus. the leggings. 2.7 million. <laughs> yeah. I'm going high for that. Yeah. Do you think he'll ever play again? He's playing he's now. Played he played last, last week. He's I played. Watch. I've given up he's on the played season. Sunday. <laughs> well, you might, would have missed one terrific game <laughs> day, <laughs> against the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I know Fez was at that game, and he had the entire road to himself. Oh, God. oh no. <laughs> the only seats that were filled were in the first level. After that... Just empty. <laughs> uh, Amanda Bynes went into a... Uh... For uh, a spiral a few years ago where she like went nuts, shaved her head, um, was like tweeting sexy photos of herself, saying how much she wanted to have sex with Drake. She says the reason that happened was because she, in the movie She's the Man, she played a boy and seeing herself like that just threw her into this depression. That's her in the movie. Man, she takes her roles pretty seriously. Yeah, she, she wasn't even playing a boy. That fat crazy girl really gets upset. <laughs> Let's see what she looks like now. That's her now. I wouldn't even know her. I could fucking bump into her in a Gristini's <laughs> window. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't even play a Excuse boy. Excuse me, sir. Could you move your fat stomach? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to play Cowboys and Indians. <laughs> she didn't play a boy in this movie. She played a girl who what? was like pretending to be a boy. By the way, boy why school. aren't you offended by that? She dresses up like a boy. She has no right. <laughs> We're boys, okay? It's ours. Do you guys find it offensive? No. I mean, her, her male representation is pretty stereotypical. Yeah, that is true, Vito. Look at that. Look at that haircut, that like, outfit. That's all of us tie. don't wear ties. No. You know? I don't have a bowl cut. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Didn't she throw a bong out of her barn window, too, I think, when the cops were coming? I, <laughs> that was the movie I hate to waste up. the weed. <laughs> <laughs> Lena Dunham has uh, moved out of Brooklyn for, to move to the West Village. And uh, it's not going over too well. 
on the old internet. But before you get to that story, you were doing the Buck story. The Redskins are the ones that everybody's mad at today. Yeah. Uh, for signing this uh, Reuben Foster. Now he physically hits women. He all right. So um, he was released from the 49ers on Saturday because he uh, was seen pushing a woman, no, slapping a phone out of her hand, pushing her and slapping her. They re- he was released immediately oh on Saturday. On Monday, the Redskins picked him up, and they didn't even call the cops to see what was what was what happened. It was like Ruben Foster's open. Let's fucking sign him. I think the Eagles did call and say what happened, and they went, "Oh God, no!" <laughs> yeah, they we did. Get- <laughs> we'll just I mean, get we had a dog that. killer. <laughs> so is, is Ray Rice the only one who went down for domestic abuse as an NFL player? Because there's been other guys like Hardy. Didn't Hardy go a while? Yeah, but here's the thing that we saw that tape, and it was. Pretty that was the elevator? Yeah. That yeah. was the elevator, yeah. Yeah, that was horrific. Now, this guy, though, should not be hitting men. He's so big. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. if we found out that he hit Earl, we'd be upset. <laughs> He's an inside linebacker. He's just a giant man. Yeah. A giant, strong, fast man. Um, But there's the fucking Redskins for you. They try to always act like there's some kind of above it all classy team it's bullshit i think they released a statement saying they're going to look into it and they're going to put him through the proper i don't know channel i don't know what the fuck they're going to do they just want if they just need a fucking linebacker they i don't understand <laughs> yeah if you want a pass rush <laughs> sports in general has been pretty like decent on domestic abusers like in uh, baseball there's been guys who've come back from that like jose reyes beat his wife well, american society is pretty yes. easy on domestic 100 percent they're the, it's something that, for whatever reason, we get over very quickly. Did you ever see that show, like, What Would You Do, it was called? Yeah. They showed, like, a guy that was fucking, like, smacking his wife around or something. And people were coming over saying, stop it, you leave her alone. But when it was a black man smacking around a black woman, people were like, hey... Take that home. Don't do it out wow. here in front of people. Take it home. And I oh fucking, I'm like watching, I'm like, holy shit. And the guy would take him aside like, hey, don't, you know, we all have fights with our wife. Why don't you make sure that you do it in, in privacy of your own home, though? That's horrific. Yeah. And that shows, that shows weird because those people have to sign a release after to let it be yes. shown that yes. they were on it. Yeah. It's just like, well, at least I'll be on TV. That's the important thing. <laughs> One guy was on TV just like when the guy was smacking his wife around, this guy just took his penis out and started masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's fucking got a new comedy tour. <laughs> and that's considered okay. <laughs> there was a thing today about Aziz has announced the tour. Yeah. Yeah, it's called the Fish Hook Tour. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't get that fish hook. It still it just confuses the hell out of me. It's just a, I guess, a porn doing? move. It's just to degrade the woman. Yeah, just uh, it's the claw. I believe he is what he called it, but it's a fish hook. But yeah, he, Chris, when do you usually pull it out? I did it once at a bar, but one was willing, so it was fine. In a bar? In a bar, yeah. In public? Yeah, in public. You it was were banging pretty, her? With I was a banger, but it was a heavy makeout sesh. And uh, then you a, clawed her face. I, I fucking gave her the claw, but she was like into it. She was happy with it. Did she request the claw? No, but I could fucking tell where it was going. So, <laughs> That's but why did move. that turn you on to call somebody during a makeout set? Yeah, you're you're Aziz Junior. I'm not Aziz Junior. She likes that. It. Is a very weird thing to do. No woman likes being clawed. A man is turned on by his domination. She liked it. You saying she? Was I mean, it's just like I'm not even saying oh, that yeah. women don't like to be dominated, but that's such a specific thing for you to go for like on first attempt with someone without Look, a discussion. We were very in happy. A public place. <laughs> that's not an excuse. <laughs> it's not an excuse, but she she was that's into an it for rape. In Chris's I'm not- <laughs> opinion. I guarantee Earl, she was confused by the claw and just was like, I guess I'm going to Earl, just if you were on the jury, this. would you sentence uh, Chris Stanley to jail? I would be guilty as charged. Yeah. That's bullshit. I concur. Yeah. Her breasts mm-hmm. were out as well. Guilty. In the bar? In the bar? In the bar. What? This sounds like a rape. This wasn't a rape. This was a gang rape in a bar. Was um, her name Jodie Foster? <laughs> Not pool table. Arcade machine. Arc- oh, is that pinball. what it was? I thought it was a pool Pim- table. Pinball what did she do? Machine. Fuck her on a Space Invaders? <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough room on an arcade. It was a pool table, right? Yeah. 
Okay. And Chris, your parents never even took you to a fucking arcade. No, they uh, just went to gamble at a- in AC and just left no. me outside the, uh, the fucking. She they left me on the steps of some AC casino as uh, my dad insisted he needed to play a little uh, fucking poker. Oh man, could have been you on the pinball table. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Right, Bizarre a choice, man. Uh, Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> Everybody knows Kate Beckinsale. Love her. Beautiful She's face. Be- oh, guess how she gets that beautiful face? She gets penis facials. <laughs> now, let me this explain what penis facials are. <laughs> oh, no. A penis facial. Look, we all do that. It's nothing to shame her about. <laughs> a penis facial is, uh, it involves a serum derived from Korean baby foreskins. And what? Yeah. Korean. And uh, the stem cells from the foreskins help rejuvenate the skin on her face. Well, it's Holy yeah. shit. So you're telling me this is like um, foreskin, like the ba- like after they've been cut, they're taking the, the cells from the... Yeah, the stem cells are harvested from the foreskins. Then they're infused into the skin using a micro needle technique. To stimulate regeneration. Wouldn't it be easier just to have a guy jizz on her face? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it. This is taking your vanity too far. I don't like to judge women. You know, you want to you wanna do whatever, modify your body in any way. I'm not going to be like one of those people who shame people for doing the anti-aging shit. But I think this is, uh, I think you're going too far. I'll say this, her skin is flawless. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she is just it's but this, gorgeous. This is actually sounds like some sort of an something like an evil queen would do like <laughs> you're using the penis uh, babies to stay youthful she's just breeding korean children <laughs> just severed penis <laughs> but those korean babies don't want that and but why korean i, I can't use a fucking to sell. Tiny kid. <laughs> too greasy <laughs> probably the skin grease the koreans just have such beautiful foreskin stem cells <laughs> <laughs> now like a few, i remember like when i was a kid fuck stem cells were like all the rage like christopher reeves was always <laughs> talking about stem cells why are you why why are you digging a hole before you make your point go ahead just say it in a normal way like i feel like there's a better there's a lot better stuff you could be doing with stem cells than just getting wrinkles out of your face people could walk again yeah but you know what Every time you have a glass of water, does somebody tell you somebody's parched in Africa? They could really use that. You know, you can't cure You're everything. You're enjoying it now. No, but She's worried about her own face. That's her business. But like, I if, mean, I'm literally saying that is her business is her face. But like, I, if the big issue with stem cell research was that it was like it was with aborted fetuses, right? Oh, no. <laughs> don't bring abortion no. into this. No. God damn it. This is your no. last dish. No. You have zero interest in this. No, I you do. don't even research what you act like. You're, you're saying making. that the you're saying the circum why would you circumcise no, no, saying, an aborted fetus? Kate no. Beckinsale is rubbing abortions on her face. No, that's not what I'm saying. I was saying the big issue with Christopher Reeves stem cell stuff. Why are you back there, dude? <laughs> Why take a hole and dive into it, Vito? It's the only stem cell. Can I just tell you something? This is like going to a fucking Italian bachelor party. (laughs) (laughs) And everyone hops in their car and turns it into a fucking derby where you're slamming into each other. Why bring up these things? Because that's the stem cell talk. No. Yeah, look at this animated version of this. First the stem cell comes out, (laughs) rub it on her face, and then you gotta make the sauce, make the really good staccato. I I understand it more now, but... Is that her there? Yeah, that's her. I didn't even recognize her. I guess that stem cell is really working. (laughs) I mean, it's doing good things for her. It's a lot of foreskins you gotta get, but... Actually, I don't have the information on how many foreskins you it. need. You don't have any information right now. I told you how the process works. I just don't know how many foreskins you need. <laughs> I'm going to guess like six. I would say four skins. <laughs> <laughs> but I go for the joke. No, I just wanted to guess how many. Mm. Ray J. Uh, yes? So, well, first, let me back this up a little. 
Kim Kardashian Back that ass claimed that when she filmed her sex tape with Ray J, mm -hmm. she was high on ecstasy. And you, there's proof to this by how her lip is quivering in the sex tape. And that's the only reason this thing really got filmed. Ray J's camp has come out to say that's bullshit. She never did any ecstasy. The most she did was smoke weed and that the quivering lip was because, you know, he was having Pit, sex right. with her. Dude, I didn't see anything moving in that sex tape. <laughs> the fucking worst. That was the dullest. It was like he was fucking a sack of flour. And by the way, he wasn't bringing it either. No. He was a yeah. daddy long, slow stroke. It was like 80% vacation video was also. Like they were like riding stuff through the islands. And if you well, want. You didn't get the clips. <laughs> you don't have to go through it all. I didn't see any of that that you're talking about. And they also, um, they just looped like. Uh, maybe two minutes of her like moaning or whatever, and it was and nothing was synced up to their fucking mouths. It was fucking awful. Oh, is that why she just keeps saying like, "Hey, yeah, you're so big, Ray," the whole time? Sexy. He should have said, "What did you just meet me? <laughs> 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 We're fucking married now. You should know." I don't like. How did she get a career out of a sex tape that's so weak? Mm, because she's not big with men. She's big with women. Women is the is the Kardashian audience. Yeah, women and gay guys. Yeah, it's and fashion. And like, if you watch that show, like I'll see it sometimes, and it's stuff that happened like eight months ago. It, that's very true. But I also heard that their ratings are in the fucking turlet this year. They're having really? a rough oh, really? time. Yeah. Well, they keep trying to like spin it off into other shows that get canceled and fail, like the Caitlyn Jenner show. Kylie had a show for a little <sighs> that didn't work. Just give one to Scott Disick. They work long enough that they make money. I mean, it's been a lot of years. They they've run a lot with this about ninety percent times longer than they should have. Yeah, yeah. I hope they saved some because they should be able to retire this now. <laughs> I hope they put a little money away too. Um, Kendall Jenner is uh, actually dating Ben Simmons again. They broke up for a little. I didn't know they broke up. Yeah, uh, she was seen making out with one of the Hadid brothers. I don't know who that is. Well, there's Bella Hadid and Gigi Hadid. They're these two very attractive model sisters, and their brother was making out with Kendall. And while she was at uh, the Sixers game, Khloe Kardashian's ex, Tristan Thompson, was taking some free throw shots, and you could see Kendall just like flipping him off and booing him on the sidelines. Good. That's why people in Philly love her. <laughs> Classes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. She better not do to Ben Simmons what they do to all these other Kardashian men. Yeah, it's something to be worried about. Like, they have ruined every athlete they've been with. The only guy that got out unscathed was James Harden because he didn't stick around that long. He was with Chloe for a minimum amount of time. James Harden also uses Korean boys fucking foreskins <laughs> <laughs> to get his That's shot done. Uh, Celebrity Big Brother premieres on January 21st, Ooh. and Julie Chen Moonves is going to be back for it as Good. Julie Chen Moonves. Good. I've heard some of the people that they've got for this. I don't want to ruin anything. But tell, tell do you want to know? Yeah, tell us. I Meryl, do. Meryl Streep. <laughs> what? Uh, what? Brad Pitt. <laughs> it's really going to be good Ow. this it's doing year. well. Uh, the Pope Chen is going in. <laughs> the retired Pope. Oh. Not oh, the wow. one who's in there now. The one Still. that they sent back to Germany. <laughs> uh, Elvis Costello is going to be in the house. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to blow last year away. I don't this think is so. You don't think so? No, I don't think any of them are gamers. <laughs> I don't know. Meryl Streep seems like she could really commit to a character in the house. You know, tell them she's a kindergartner teacher, so <laughs> they don't consider her a threat. Did you just say kindergartner teacher? Kindergartner teacher. <laughs> she teaches kindergartners. Oh, boy. But the, sh the show has not been renewed for season 21 yet in the summer. In the summer. Maybe they're just going to switch over and be a straight celebrity show. I, that would, I wouldn't watch anymore. If it went straight celebrity, I'm done. I give up on Big Brother. Really? I never watch Your it again. Your biggest love, Big Brother. You would, you would yeah. turn your back? Chris, will you continue to do Big Brothers without him? Yes, I will. So I don't think Adam will do it without me. That's a solo act. You Why can't even get do Bronx it with Johnny? <laughs> Bronx Johnny, you're going to be watching sort of Big Brother with me. If you give up on the dream, I'm not. I mean, I'm not giving up on the dream. I just have standards. And if they really would get rid of the better show just for this money grab, then I'm out. Um. Hey, uh, Jessica is in Philly. Hey, Jessica, what's up? What's up? Hey. Uh, so there's actually a petition here in Philly happening right now to uh, block Kendall Jenner from the Wells Fargo Center so she can't watch Ben. 
it's the fucking hilarious thing ever. Somebody go find the link. I'm driving right now, so I'm okay. So send it to us. Chris, get on that shit. It's so funny. Yeah, but here's the thing. Fucking, you don't want to piss off Ben Simmons. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he'll just be like, "Fuck you! I'll, I'll trade me." <laughs> mm. This is a long petition. When you're at that those games, you've never been down for it. No, I might. I might go down in December for before the game. Days. Everybody uh, sings this. We're at the Wells Fargo Center and we're coming at you and we're, and everybody's just singing it together. It's really really fun. That's great. That sounds like a really good time. Um, well, they won't want you to do it because you'll be in your next gear. No, I will not go. Uh, I went to Philly's Mets wearing Mets stuff because both teams were in a really shitty place. So nobody cared. Nobody bothered me. I don't think I would disrespect a good team by wearing my shit in their house. Okay. Have it your way. At the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Donald Glover has released a trailer for... Isn't a... his name pronounced Danny? <laughs> no, you're thinking about <laughs> Lethal Weapon. <laughs> Always. I love it. <laughs> um, I'm too old for this. <laughs> Riggs. He uh, showed a secret. Riggs. I'm getting too old for this Wells Fargo Center. <laughs> Riggs. <laughs> what's going on with Kendall Jenner? <laughs> uh, he released a secret trailer for a movie filmed with Rihanna in Cuba called Guava Island. He premiered it at this festival in oh. New Zealand that my friend Ian flew out to New Zealand just to go see the festival. Trailer showed. I'm very excited for this movie. Directed by Hiro Mirai, who does Atlanta. Where does Ian get the money to fly? No idea. No idea. He's, oh, I, yeah. He's fucking around with that the sugar daddy. Sugar daddy. I, I don't know if the sugar daddy's there, but my mom was asking the same thing. Of course it was. The Donald Glover thing. Yeah, it's the fucking he's, sugar it's, daddy. He doesn't just get, he mostly got basketball tickets. The Donald Glover tickets were. But he knows that's what Ian likes, so he's going to do what Ian likes. Maybe Ian went a little mm. further for him and looked this fucking bag. Yeah. I told him to if it came up. Uh -huh. You told him to suck on his balls. I told him if you gotta, you know, touch it a little, go for it. Just fucking do it. Keep Tongue your touch. sugar train rolling. And maybe that's why he's in New Zealand right sugar now. Sugar train. Sugar train. That's the <laughs> Never heard of that. Before. Well, sugar daddy, and you know he's providing this train of goods <laughs> along for him, so it's the sugar train. <laughs> But Rihanna, Riggs, I'm getting too old to <laughs> be blown like this. This kid. <laughs> sure, 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 sure Would you? Do you think uh, the sugar daddy banged him in the asshole? I don't think banged him in the ass. I think it could end up there, though. I think mm. if he starts, you know, it's like a gateway jerk off. Right. You know, he get he jerks him off. He lets him get. What do you think that once. he would be willing to take anal for? Your friend. I think to get backstage. At a Childish Gambino show where he gets to meet Donald Glover. You think he'd take it? I think he takes it in the ass. Guess what? Talk to Leeds. I'm sure we can work this out. <laughs> so wait, is he jerking off Leeds now? <laughs> no. One of us will bang him in the ass just so we can okay. tease you about having a gay friend. <laughs> um, Jada Pickett Smith said uh, that her mom was questioning her marriage to Will Smith and asked her why don't they just get a divorce. And uh, Jada said that they built such a beautiful family. She didn't want to break it up. And she doesn't consider herself mature enough to handle a divorce. You think they're dating other people, though? Well, that's been a long rumor. Um, he's dating dudes, right? That's that's part of it. People think he's... No, no, no. And she's dating women. Mm -hmm. that's really? What I they're hear. both gay. Yeah. I see it more... They're, I'll just say this. Their beards are as flimsy <laughs> as Ted Cruz's. <laughs> So do you think that's why he years ago refused to kiss a guy on screen? Yeah. So you know he get a fucking pitch of tap when he did it. He had the urges. Uh, I could definitely, I could see her more than him for some reason being. Because you're no misogynistic. Way. No, not because I'm him, misogynistic. Him over her. For I sure. think he looks like the gayest fucking thing that ever did. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He I never saw that. He seems like a little uh, DL, for sure. When uh, he was in Sirius and he was just sitting down in the lobby, he eyed me down. So I'm thinking, what? Come on, Chris. I swear to God, we made eye I've eyed you down too. Does that make me gay? <laughs> You're not One time I paid fucking Chris $140 just to take a shower in front of me. <laughs> I did it gladly. You could have got him cheaper. Nah, I'm just really glad he took a shower. Take a shower. <laughs> I, out of that shower came all the cleaning supplies, and he had to do everything from scratch. <laughs> And that included the nails. <laughs> I said, make sure you get a nail stick. 
this is my last dish story of your career. No, no not in my career. This is you know, there's more dishes to serve. You know, Italian <laughs> dishes, baked ziti, lasagna. Mm. Let's hold on. Let the laughs fucking sustain before you come back into this. Timing's everything. Dana White called Oscar De La Hoya a cokehead for the uh, Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell fight that he promoted last weekend. He said he's a cokehead for... Just called him a cokehead in general. Then said uh, it was ridiculous he would allow this fight to happen. Also said he's not talking shit about Chuck because they're good friends. And he advised him not to go into this match. Before. I don't know who we're talking about. Who's the cokehead now? Oscar De La Hoya is the cokehead. Mm -hmm. And he has had dr drug and alcohol problems in the past. Uh, he's one of the... You watch boxing. He's like one of the big promoters right now, right? He he has one of the two big, uh, two big promotions. And he has Sal Canelo, who's like the biggest middleweight right now. <clears throat> and he's golden boy, right? He's golden boy, yeah. But yeah, he's a, he's fucking done some coke. It's not, I don't think Dana White is just pissed he didn't promote the fucking fight. No, I don't think he would have put this fight on. I mean, it's it was an embarrassment. Liddell went down in like the first round, got knocked out viciously. I was surprised by because he looked like he was in better shape than Tito Ortiz, but he was gassed. Uh, I don't I don't understand why Dana White would come after a, just. It's not like this promotion's coming for UFC by any means. It's a pretty small. Well, fight Thinking promoters that, just talk shit all the time anyway. That's what they do. They talk shit so people can talk about them. Well, he didn't have to bring cocaine into it. That's the shit part. And this week's Dish segment is presented by Dish. Get extra action with NFL Red Zone from NFL Network on Dish at no extra charge. Dish tuned into you. To learn more, call 1-844-CALL-DISH or go to dish.com. I will be right back. Bennington. Bennington Show. Thanks for that little plug, Vito. Also reminding everybody, if you want to come in and co-host the show with us, the Bennington Show, go to charitybuzz.com to bid on a chance to co-host the Bennington Show. Bidding ends Wednesday, December 12th. I hear all the other shows running spots. I don't hear us running any spots. We do not have a spot. Why? Because we, uh, Vito and I have not produced it. Why? It's a good question. Earl, you produce spots, right? Yes. You think that's something you'd be interested in doing? I mean, I heard today the way when they said, what's your career highlight? They said, and, and Earl says, watching Ron do an interview is my career highlight. And then mm -hmm. um, Sam actually said, it's funny because Chris's career is doing a podcast on a totally different network away from us. My career's here at Sirius really? XM with the Bennington Show. Ask Jim McClure because he asked me what goes d on at that other place. Oh. And I go, it's something good. he's doing against uh, Sirius XM. There's no, nothing against Sirius XM. Really? Is it the same platform? It is not the same platform. No further no, questions, then. It's a very damning question <laughs> there. He said Feels he like, has no further questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that means I got that motherfucker. <laughs> but thank you for saying that, Earl. It's something I, I've never heard from Chris. That's so sweet, Earl. Yeah. I love you, and I love all of your interviews. Wow. Stop saying it so sexily. Baby, I love you. There's <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, I love you. Baby. Um, there's a piece up on the iBang. Uh, I think they have it down as un-Christmases. Now, this was kind of interesting to me, and I don't know the gentleman who did this. It's a Glenn uh, Fonstock. Then I do know him. Yes. Um, but the idea was these are movies that take place during the holiday season, but they're not exactly Christmas movies. 844 Rock God, 844 Rock God, because there was always the debate whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Yeah, that's kind of the classic one. And Bruce Willis came out and said it wasn't. Yeah. But it does have a Santa Claus in it. Yeah. True. 
It's the Christmas season. Covered in blood that says, ho, ho, ho. Now I have a machine gun. (laughs) Very witty. (laughs) Very clever. Do you consider it, Gail, to be a Christmas movie or not? I would say yes. I think if you enjoy it around Christmas, it's got Christmas in it. If it makes you, if it reminds you of Christmas to watch it, by all means, you're enjoying a Christmas movie. Now... I used to watch a uh, a movie every year that was a Bogart movie that was We're No Angels, and it took place on Devil's Island, and it was my tradition to watch that with my older brother and whatever girlfriend he had at the time. <laughs> um, I can't even find it anymore because people do not like the block and white movies. They go, I want a color movie. I don't want a block and white movie. (laughs) But, I mean, this was prisoners killing guards, and it was funny. It's a comedy. and um, It's a really good movie. You played it for me as a kid, and I I was a big fan. I wanted you to catch on with it, but then they didn't play it every year. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be one of these guys... um, Buying a, VHS. Yeah, buying a block and want <laughs> VHS. So to me, that was always one. Uh, what about for you, Earl Douglas? For me, for me, it was trading places. Until you said it, Earl, it did not dawn on me that what. But remember uh, that um, a, a certain point, uh, Dan Aykroyd puts on Santa suit. He raids the Christmas party. He steals the fish. He's stealing booze. He's high on bills. But then there was a weird thing where they act like New Year's Eve. People dress up like Halloween. Oh, Remember yeah. on the train? Yeah. That was supposed to be New Year's Eve. And you're like, why are you dressing up like that? <laughs> I thought they so were in weird. character. Gail, do you have? I do. Mm-hmm. I do have an un-Christmas movie. I have not seen it in many years, but I really love to watch this around Christmas. Remember, The Ref took place around Christmas. Um, I haven't seen it in a lot of years either. And yes, you're right. That is a... Yeah, that is a yeah. Christmas movie. I remember the Christmas tree in the yeah. in the in the dining room, whatever. Or, or yes, in house. and in fact, so it's a uh, Dennis Leary, Kevin Spacey, um, and the I remember even the couple was doing like the traditional like um, it's I think it's maybe like a Swedish tradition where you're like wearing the candles around the around your head as yeah, you eat yeah. the Christmas dinner because it was supposed to be just like a rich neighborhood, and then it was like all this weird tension. But nope. I remember find, like loving this movie as a kid and finding it hilarious. And I haven't seen it on in a million years. You know what's funny is Dennis Leary was the star, not Kevin Spacey. Yeah, totally. He was a yeah. much bigger star than Kevin Spacey at the time. That was a Dennis Leary vehicle right there. Now, was that in Block and Watt? Or was this... <laughs> this is not Block and Watt. <laughs> this was Carla. <laughs> nice color TV you have there. We only have blog and watts. <laughs> um, all right, let me uh, let me see if this very gentle soul would like to join us with this. And let's go to Eric in Virginia. Eric, what do you have? Hey, your buddies. Hey, buddy. Uh, Gremlins is set at Christmas time because he gets uh, Gizmo as a Christmas present. No. I always was curious. Why would they do? Why would they put it then? You know? Oh. Yeah, I nothing mean, else in the movie is Christmassy, just that they were, he gets the gremlin at Christmas. Yeah. I guess that was the entire point of him buying that gremlin. That he, here's China. my question. You know, back then, Christmas was a, even a bigger time to open up than summer. And maybe they thought people were already going to be in a Christmassy move. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Jeff, Arizona. Jeff, what's up, buddy? Hey, Ron. Great show, man. How about uh, Lethal Weapon? Lethal Weapon, there's actually even a buying a Christmas tree scene that takes place. (laughs) I forgot about that. I remember Gary Busey when he raided in the house and on the TV was like, what time of year is it? And he's like, it's fucking Christmas. (laughs) Yeah, it's, um, well, that's, uh, what's his name? Black. Um, the Shane Black. Shane Black. 
always puts his things at Christmas. Always. I didn't really never, never thought of that either. There's a lot of stuff you don't know because you don't leave. <laughs> you don't read Movie Line magazine. <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, Vito, we haven't gone to you yet. And I know as a Jewish boy, it's difficult for you to be part of this. <laughs> no, I'm very Catholic. Uh, You're an Italian Jew. It's uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang because he's at a Christmas party in the beginning of the movie. And who was the writer-director of that? Shane Black. Thank you. Damn it. And what did I just say moments before? What? Shane Black always puts oh, yeah. his stuff at Christmas. <laughs> Chris, you have egg on your face right now. Again. Yeah, but from breakfast. <laughs> Please, why Bob? I'm a sloppy boy. Uh, Ian in New Jersey. Hey, guys. Uh, so Coming to America is my Christmas movie. I didn't remember that this was at Christmas. I'm not sure if they specifically say it's Christmas, but it just has that feel. They're having holiday parties. The snow is everywhere. It just feels like a Christmas movie to me. I don't think it is. No. There's no reference to Christmas. There might be parties. There's not even like uh, any Christmas stuff in the background. Am yeah, I wrong? I don't remember that. Earl, you're the guy who knows all about coming to America. I don't remember it being a Christmas flick. I remember it was shot right down the block from my high school. Was it shot in the winter? It was shot in the winter, but it was mm. not. I don't think it was a directly a Christmas film or it referenced Christmas movie at all. Re references Christmas at all. I don't know what's wrong with my tongue. Earl, I know you're tired. You were up early with me this morning when we did Jim and Sam. 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 You I have big... another yeah. uh, on Christmas that I just remembered. Okay. Mixed Nuts. was that... to Remember the Mixed Nuts with Steve Martin? Yeah. Took place around Christmas, I think. I feel like they had like office Christmas stuff hanging up. That was Nora Ephron wrote and directed that. And she also did Sleepless in Seattle, which is a kind of takes place at Christmas. It does. Oh, yeah, it's And true. there's a slight Christmas, but they're not, no one gets the Christmas spirit. But remember when she's driving and she's like, horses, 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 the way exactly. she says horses. <laughs> horses, horses. Yeah, that, it was like almost went from like Christmas to Valentine's Day. It's like yep. starts kind of around the Christmas season. Yes, and ends the end of Valentine's, the movie. you're right. Yeah. Now, uh, and people think of it as a Valentine show though, but the, the Gail, if somebody told me, hey, has Gail ever seen the movie Mixed Nuts? I would have said no. Really? Yeah, I did not. He would have been dead wrong. I mean, I guarantee you, Chris has it. I've not seen it. Vito has it. Earl has it. It's a very it's a great movie. It was a it was a bomb. It literally set off an explosion. Oh no! Great cast. Yeah, great cast. Of course, one of the great writer directors of all time, um, but um, did not hit with that one. I have to go back to see um, the film again. I hope it's on this year. Bobby, <laughs> you're on Bennington. Yeah, yeah. I got a uh, Dutch. Goes to pick the kid up from military school. And they have <laughs> they get all the way home. Dutch was Christmas. the uh, what's the name of the guy? He did um, oh, Pretty in Pink and all those things. John Hughes. John Hughes. This is one of his few bombs. A big stinky shitty bomb. I thought Dutch was Thanksgiving. I think you're thinking of planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I want you As to move usual. Up <laughs> so I can see some of these. All right. So the ones up on the eye bang and go check it out. Uh, Die Hard is on there, despite the fact that Bruce says it does not have anything to do with Christmas. Lethal Weapon is on there. Uh, and we brought up Gremlins being on there. Boy, we're just fucking killing it today, guys. Nailing it. Really, really proud of us. The ref is not on? <laughs> the ref is not on there. <laughs> no what? mixed nuts? <laughs> um, all right, I'll give out one that is on that list because I don't think anybody else would think it. Eyes Wide Shut takes place at oh, Christmas. Oh, shit, you're right. Yeah. Is, that, is it a sexy Christmas party that they're at? Um, no, it's just a sexy party, but Christmas is going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because there's, there's a tree in the house. And isn't he getting a gift for someone, too, at one point? The gift of confusion. 
<laughs> he got him a mask. Oh, thank you, Tom Cruise. <laughs> Tom Cruise, you fucking Scientologist. We know you're behind some of these beatings. <laughs> There's too many dead women showing up here. Horses, 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 <laughs> horses. Um, all right, let's go over here to Jeff in North Carolina. Hey, guys. Uh, hey. Grumpy Old Men is my favorite movie to watch around Christmas. That is a Christmas that's almost too cold when they're sawing a, a <laughs> hole in the ice. Oh, yeah. Yep, love that movie. Yeah, people do love that movie. What about Grumpier Older Men? Do you like that one? <laughs> um, Mark in Virginia. Hi, guys. Um, my favorite one is Life of Brian. Oh, that's a very <laughs> funny one. The first Christmas, And not written right? by Shane Block. Yeah. Um, block and what is the way we go. <laughs> <laughs> that, was really, that was a fucking double funny call. Kevin, Della who? Della what? Della where? Della where? Hey, guys. Yeah. Hey, I was going to mention uh, Funny Farm. Um, it takes uh, place over like spring, no, summer, but like the last time. I just want to see this. Like Christmas. Chris Danley just did a spiteful <laughs> laugh, like a. <laughs> You hate Funny Farm? Um, I remember the last time I watched it was in college, but I remember thinking this was ridiculous. I remember not liking it. Now, I, what what was your beef with it? I think though, just the the premise was too ridiculous. I, it's the last time I watched it. Was it's just, a broad premise, indeed, but uh, I think a lot of people started to become part of an anti Chevy Chase thing <laughs> when some of the bad Chevy Chase stories came out. Um, Is that the I, movie where they get the dog? Uh, this is the one where he's a sports writer in New York and he moves to Vermont and finds that small town life is pretty difficult to deal with. But the Christmas scenes, this little town all done up in, in Christmas is actually beautiful. Like it's really, really gorgeously shot. It's the Christmas that people would love to have. Just yeah. some Vermont Christmas. And unlike Chris Stanley... I'm going to give this a thumbs up and a Ron Bennington stamp of approval. <laughs> uh, Gail, do you remember the movie? Yes, I do. And it is like, this is the movie where they get the dog and the dog, like they, he lets the dog out and it just keeps running. <laughs> just like keeps running it off into the woods. I know he also has a crazy mailman who yeah. screams when he runs by. Uh, Earl, have you seen Funny Farm? I have not seen it, no. You're gonna uh, love Vito? it. No, I've never seen it. All right, so you guys have an assignment. We're all going to rewatch the movie, and then yes! some of us watch it for the first time. <laughs> I'll rewatch. Yeah. It's been a while. The last time we were forced into this, we watched the new Coen Brothers, and all you guys end up enjoying it, loving it. And you fought me tooth and nail. I don't about know why I seeing did that. that. <laughs> um, hey, uh, this is Wes in South Carolina. What's up, guys? I was thinking about uh, when I used to watch was Edward Scissorhands, and Tim Burton used Christmas in a lot of his movies. I forgot that that had anything to do with Christmas because they shot it in Florida with all those weird colored houses. Yeah. Um, Pastel color, right? Yeah. yeah. It was a weird, weird movie. It's kind of magical, though. And for some reason, there's just a giant mountain next to them. For Vincent Price. In a place there wouldn't be a mountain. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll give that, uh, I'll give that, uh, a part of this list here. Craig in Philly. Greg in Philly. Hey, Ron. Good talk to you, Gail. Great to hear you back. Yeah. I, uh, you talked about the, uh, the Kate Beckinsale earlier, uh, and it might be one of those where it touched on and moved on, but Serendipity with John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale. Uh, it's a... Terrible movie in so no, many I, different yeah. ways. It's just ungodly, unwatchable. And yet she's so pretty. They shoot New York nice. You know, Serendipity, where we've all been to dinner before, is in it. That I have put on this movie and thought to myself, well, this is terrible, and watched it all the way through. <laughs> have you guys seen it? I've seen it once. Uh, Earl? Yes, I've seen it. I have not it. seen it. I've seen it. Love it? Say it again. Come in here, fucker. Come in. <laughs> You're too stupid to be here. You're too stupid. Too stupid. 
Mo. Mo, what's up? Hey, Bennington. Yeah. Hey, uh, Tombstone came out December 25th, 1993. Maybe oh, it came out then, but that's yeah. not what we're talking that's about. That's the best Christmas movie ever made. <laughs> You're that's wrong. not how this By the works. Way, you're calling from Indiana? Yeah. But they have it, Mo, in Tombstone. And I looked up, I'm like, oh, <laughs> motherfucker's calling us from Tombstone. This is great. <laughs> He's calling us from the OK Corral. <laughs> you're going to do OK, my friend. Um, Hey, uh, Larry in Philly. Larry. You, uh, there's a movie called Paradise. Have you guys ever seen it? Uh, I don't with, think I know this Nick, film. Nick Nicholas Cage and Lovitz. It's filmed in Paradise. I don't know. Oh, is it like Escape or something like that? It's yeah, something like that. Three it's, guys it's so, trying to get out of this yeah. town during an it's ice so storm. Stupid. Yeah. yeah, it's so stupid, but funny as hell. Terrible. Oh. Trapped in Paradise. A terrible movie. But terrible it's funny. I can't, movie. I watch it every year. Right. <laughs> I mean, if it works for you, it works for you. Chris. Yes. In Long Island, you're on. Bank. Damn it. <laughs> season's greetings, Bennington. Hey, season's greetings to you. Steven Spielberg's 1941. This was an incredibly hated comedy when it came out <laughs> because Quarter Spielberg Quarter. spent a ton of money on it. And, you know, using kind of the guys from Animal House, uh, and that, that would have been a big beloved film. And then, you know, Spielberg had done Jaws and Close Encounters. And then this was the big, stinky bomb uh, that came after it. I've never seen it. It is a, um, it's kind of like a mad, mad, mad world where you're supposed to laugh that giant set pieces are falling down. Um, there's also a scene where a woman, I'll, I'll never forget this because I, even though I was a kid when I saw it, I thought, well, this is ridiculous. So she's looking at the shape of an airplane and she's being like turned on. She's actually becoming aroused because the plane is shaped. Yeah. Even though most of life <laughs> is phallic, she waits and doesn't have wings. That's so, why yeah, it's it, so difficult to be a woman. She, yeah. Um, Tony in Denver. Tony. Yeah, I was always thinking uh, Long Kiss Goodnight. Gina Davis and Samuel Jackson. You guys saw this film? Yes. It's more fun. Than, I mean, it was a bomb when it came out. Now you look back at it, it's pretty good. Uh, awesome. Shane Black. Yeah. Again, another Shane Black. Yeah. And yep. Yep. he has another one. Uh, Iron Man 3 also takes place at Christmas time. Oh, that little kid because he wants, uh, yeah. he's getting Christmas <laughs> presents of his Iron Man suit. I wonder why he does that. But it works. He's the only kind of action guy that I love his writing. Yeah. Uh, Mike in New York. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Uh, Gone Girl. That takes place at Christmas, and it's really good to see Ben Affleck uh, try and wiggle his way out of that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Ben Affleck, that reminded me, He did you guys ever see Reindeer Games? Yes. Where yeah. he's like a bank robber or yeah. whatever, and that takes place at Christmas, but it's not really Christmassy at all, despite calling it Reindeer Games. It feels like a Shane Black, but is it? I don't think no, it is. it's not. But it's like a Shane Black ripoff. Yeah. I, uh, I saw that movie as a kid because I thought it was the Deer Hunter. What are you doing? You dummy. I thought, I just, I saw deer and reindeer, and I I was expecting the whole Russian roulette thing the entire. Gail, I know that you want to help this veto. I just don't see it taking place. Veto, you make it hard. You make it hard for me. <laughs> that sounded <Sorry. sexual. laughs> sounded I meant you made my boner hard. Todd, <laughs> St. Louis. Hey, Ron, less than zero, where Robert Downey Jr. can't handle his blow and dies. I like that uh, Vinay wrote left of zero, which kind of is having me giggling. Less than zero does take place during the winter break of college. And the kids of L.A. are spending way too much on their Christmas parties. And there's a, the greatest line in that film is he looks up and says to a girl, 
do you realize that you have a television between your legs? And that lets us know we are, in fact, less than zero. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you want to see a snowy Christmas in your Christmas movies? Or is like a Caribbean Christmas okay for you? Uh, Caribbean Christmas is okay for me. No, I like yeah. I like a nice somber Christmas snow. Somber snow. Somber snow. Never heard of it. Gray, Thought white. Of it that way. I was trying to think of the word, but I just just fucking finished it. What was somber? Is that what was somber? Snow had gotten some bad news. I didn't yeah. Really. What about you? As a uh, Florida-born child, I'm fine with there not being snow in Christmas. Not only do I want there to be snow, but I want a cabin to take place. I want it to be a winter vacation or gaycation, as I'm now forced to say. Um, Troy in New Hampshire. Troy. Uh, so it's a cult classic, but it was always one of my favorites growing up, and it's got to be Better Off Dead with John Cusack. Uh, the weird ski team thing takes place for no apparent reason. Wait, you're looking like you don't know this? No, I know the movie, but yeah. I don't remember it being Christmas. Well, it was snowy. Christmas. Oh. No, no, if, you, if you guys said remember. Christmas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, uh, Josh. Josh, what's up? Yeah, I just wanted to nominate the uh, 2000 classic Just Friends with Ryan Reynolds. And uh, Anna Ferris. Now that's the one that he used to be the fat boy, and then he comes yeah. home as a stud, yeah. which I always hate. Someone is like, "Look at me now." Oh, he's um, a, he's but, a hot music producer. Yeah, and it is. Uh, it does take place at Christmas. Yeah, and that one—that's one of those ones that makes all those like lists now of like favorite Christmas movies. Really? Yeah. Because he was so fat before. Yeah. He is beloved, and. Deadpool could not be any kind of edgier for a kid's movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then now he gets his own Christmas movie, Once Upon a Deadpool, where he takes Deadpool 2 and just adds, I guess, introductions to scenes. I think he what they do is try to take it from an R rating to a PG. Yeah. It's Are you going? No, it's, I, I don't support that move. And I'll bet any of it. Um, Renee. Renee, what's up? Hey, Ronnie. Um, there's this movie, I can't remember the name of it, but I think you will. It's an Italian family. The kid gets real lucky all the time. He wins a lot of, like, I think on Christmas Eve, or then he gets stabbed, but it saves his life because he had a tumor or something. Do you know the movie I'm talking about? I tell it's you the truth, I really don't know this movie. <laughs> I want to say pay it yeah, forward. Yeah. Is no, it just is called it? Italian Spaghetti Boy? <laughs> no, I mean, don't you guys eat spaghetti and meatballs all the time? I if I didn't know the no name. I know I messed up. No, 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 anyway. no. I love this, but I, Gail, do you have any idea? I have no idea. I mean, the, uh, kid... You know, the kid gets lucky, like, all through the movie, but he's kind of like a shithead. But he does good at the end. And you know what year it would have come out about? In the 90s. Are you just messing with me? No, Tell I really don't know this. I, I googled lucky kid wins lotto on Christmas Eve <laughs> stabbed, and uh, nothing's coming up for film. You, 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 know, you guys are messing with me. I swear to God, anyway, I swear to you, I would okay, not you know do this to you. The father's an Italian actor. I think he's, I want to say his last name is Moreno, and he sings too. He has albums and stuff. Maybe Ken Moreno? Danny Aiello? No. <laughs> All right, you guys are fucking me up. No, no. an Italian that, that sings too. Is it Frank Sinatra? Yeah, 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 right, that's it, Frank Sinatra. The summer wind. <laughs> I'm <laughs> creeping in okay. from below my pants. Pope of Greenwich Village? Pope of Greenwich Village. That did not take place at Christmas. He th I, do you think he's fucking with us? All right, so I think I found some 29th Street. It's And there, there's no telling where luck will take you. And look who that is. That's the old fucking New York um, talk show guy. Oh, shit. Uh... Uh, go down to see who stars in it. I have never seen this movie, and Danny Aiello is in, is in it. Robert Forster. I've never seen this. Tony Sirico. 
I never saw it before. I'm telling you, I'm going to try to give it a try. It looks terrible, though. <laughs> you know? It looks like, hey, going by. Hey, how are you? I do like that he was like, you're fucking with me. Santa Nick is here, right? For you. Uh, Jerry in Ontario. Hey, I want to throw out uh, Goodfellas. Um... Yeah, Goodfellas does have Christmas scenes in it, that's for sure. And then that guy frozen in the truck. Um, my friend Glenn put this uh, together. It's up on the iBang. Uh, Glenn is the guy who grew up across the street from that beautiful theater that he said he flew back just to watch me play that theater because he had once seen, now I forget the movie, Jaws, Close Encounters, something. I think it was Jaws. I think it's a Spielberg. He's no, it was E.T. E.T. So while you're fucking blowing me off, boom. And he's at Glenn's Film on Twitter. Glenn's Film. Why is that important? Sorry, let everyone know who he is. No, I'm asking you. Why is that important? What is with your fucking generation and the constant need, you know what I mean, to send accolades back and forth, thumbs up, likes? <laughs> The other day, Earl put out something. He didn't get any likes. He almost killed himself. Earl. It's not worth it, man. Earl. Earl, what are you doing for Christmas this year? Um, I'm finally going to have a Christmas off, so I just might chill. (laughs) Chill with the fam. Because <laughs> I was working on Christmas. Didn't expect that answer. Why do they laugh in this? Vito, why are you cruelly laughing? <laughs> what was funny about that? Vito. Vito's lo- losing his shit. He's like an Italian bully over here. He what is, is so fucking funny, Vito? But Vito. Are you alright? He's fucking. He's choking himself. <laughs> I didn't expect him to say chill with the fam. What? He's allowed to say that. I didn't I expect a Negro, to say that. What? Vinny. 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 Oh, God, I'm tired. He called him Vinny because it's he's trying to be racist. You know what? You got to go back to work tonight, right? Yeah, I got a shift tonight. And think about me. I'll be fucking sleeping. Chill with you know? the fam. I'm going to chill with the fam. <laughs> <laughs> we know what Vito is doing seven beautiful fishies. Yeah. First, we start out with this fish, then another fish. Give me some more fish. <laughs> till I get to seven. Mom, I only have four fishies. Ma! The other fishies! <laughs> Gotta have all the fishies. <laughs> It was mean enough already. <laughs> hey, Ma! I'm gonna lay some bricks and then come back and have some old fishes. We're a doorman and super family. <laughs> You're a super family. Hey, everybody's coming home with their tips, the doorman tips. Yeah. <laughs> I made $22,000 in tips this year. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. We can have nine fish. <laughs> Eric in New York. Uh, hey, guys. Hey. Um, meet me in St. Louis. I will. Uh, it's, it's very romantic. Cruise, but we have, <laughs> we have, um, have yourself a merry little Christmas. That's where we get that song from. Don't I know it? My favorite of all the fucking Christmases song. Yeah. My second favorite. Give me some fish. Bum bum. <laughs> Seven fish. Bum bum. All the supers are coming here. They all get the door. Bum bum. Where the fish? Ah uh, ah. Uh. You fucking love that, huh? I do. I, I love. I love, you love the uncles, the cousins. We all get together. The murders. Nice to live a criminal lifestyle. We're not it? all criminals. It's just some bad examples, some just, bad apples. You just think laws don't apply to you. What's no, those aren't bad examples. Those are perfect examples. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Would you be able to take Earl to your fucking family dinner Probably or not? not? Probably wouldn't make it okay. very far into the That's apartment. all I needed to know. Mm. If Stax doesn't go in, <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> I can't meet Paulie and Paulie Jr. Oh, yeah. oh shit. 
You <laughs> fucking got this Yo. lasagna. Eat it. Chill Earl, with the fail. Blatant racism. He's right, though. He's right. I don't have any family members named Polly or Polly Jr. <laughs> it's bullshit. Oh, and also, uh, we don't call any juniors junior. We all we do little. It's in every Italian I know it doesn't do like Tommy Junior. It's just Big Tom, Little Tom. No juniors or seconds. I always think that's sad. What doing? Uh, big and little. My cousin's fifty-seven. He's still little Ray. <laughs> 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 it's not right. Hey, little Ray's here. <laughs> Brandon, what do you got? Brandon in L.A. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, man. Uh, I got with honors from Robin Williams and Brendan Snyder, Frazier, whatever. He is, that is one of the funniest freaking movies at Christmas time. For some reason, fucking Chris stopped looking these up as we went along. Because this movie, do you know it? No, I know? don't. I didn't know Robin Williams and Brendan Fraser did a movie together. And it looks like they did. There's no Robin Williams. It's Joe Pesci. <laughs> Joe Pesci. And is that where Joe Pesci is the homeless guy who's also a genius? That's exactly correct. Yeah. And he steals his Harvard final paper and all that good stuff. What I wanted to do is buy that on a DVD so I can wipe my ass with it. <laughs> yeah, have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it. After Goodfellas and after he did the I'm an Italian lawyer down south. My cousin Vinny. Yeah. He went on a tear of just money grabs, <laughs> one after another, <laughs> so much that he just fucking money grabbed his, himself out of the business. By 2000, he stopped making movies. Was Home Alone in that time? Or Home was Alone that? was a, a little bit after Goodfellas, yeah. Um, and my cousin Vinny was in there. I mean, Casino. Now, what's that? Casino. Casino was like... Hey, this is a nice little breath of fresh air in the middle of all these Jimmy Hollywood fucking crappy movies that he was doing. That's a movie you can tell is bad by the poster. Like, it just looks like a bad... It's a Breakfast Club ripoff, I guess? Um, Hey, here's Dominic. Dominic, what's up? Hey, Ron. How's it going, man? Good. Good. Um, when Danny Aiello was in your studio and you interviewed him years ago, the one movie he recommended to you was 29th Street. He told you it was the best movie he's ever done. I feel terrible now. I do kind of remember this now. And I remember saying, it was a while ago. I'm going to go see it. I'm going to go see this movie. And look what I fucking did. <laughs> look how I disrespected <laughs> you, him. You broke his heart. I disrespected him and the Italian people. Are we taking it to the limit, uh, Chris? Yeah, we're taking it to the limit. Let me ask you something. Why can't you and Vito get along nicer? I don't know. It's Christmas time. I think it's a time when we should. You already consider it Christmas time. It's huh? Christmas time. It's 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 after Thanksgiving. It's Christmas time. I didn't, I never took it that way. What did you do? December first. Mm. I do the second the tree goes on. Oh, okay. The second. So I'm waiting a little bit before it's Christmas. About three and a half hours. Yeah, I get three and a half hours. <laughs> what do you take, girl, for Christmas time? I always wait. Like yeah, I wait to the tree. He's just like lit. me. <laughs> fucking Chris is these. nothing. <laughs> Chris is nothing like us. Nothing. We're the two friends. He's the outsider. I'm the three and a half hours ahead guy. <laughs> no, you're a week or two. What you said what? Thanksgiving. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> See, that's he's right. He caught you in another fucking lie. All right, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. I lie sometimes. <laughs> Do you? No, I don't. No, I don't lie. I'm. A, I, I fuck. That was a lie. <laughs> so I guess yes, that was a lie. <laughs> I do I do Christmas when on Thanksgiving at the parade. My Christmas starts Christmas Eve. I do all my shopping. <laughs> I get my tree. Stressful. Everything. No, I love it. I run into the store, I say, give me that, give me that, give me that. I can think more with my gut than most people can with their brains. Remember that. Thought that was gonna be a big uh, laugh, but that's what happened. <laughs> With Trump, he goes through so many fucking things. <laughs> this is what we were laughing about last night. He's already on the seven new things. Yeah. It He's just made stopped. too much sense to me. <laughs> Say what today's that you wanted to bring up on the air. I go, don't do it. Everybody's in a good mood. <laughs> All right. So Trump was talking, uh, was taking a question about climate change from a Washington Post reporter. And he says, one of the problems that a lot of people like myself 
We have very high levels of intelligence, but we're not necessarily such believers in climate change. You look at our air and our water, and it's right now at a record clean. Um, and when you're talking about an atmosphere, oceans are very small, and it blows over and it sails over. I mean, we take thousands of tons of garbage off our beaches all the time that come over from Asia. It just flows right down the Pacific. It flows. And we say, where does this come from? And it takes many people what? to start off with. What is he talking about? The oceans are so small, climate change doesn't matter, I guess. <laughs> this is the ramblings of a madman. <laughs> it sounds like when you ask a little kid to just, like, explain something to you for fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very small. <laughs> and a lot of uh, garbage is on our beaches. Hundreds of thousands of tons. <laughs> Nobody knows where it comes from. You just <laughs> fucking told us. It's the Asians. <laughs> Chucking garbage. Just flowing down the Pacific. Like Why the Pacific's- is there garbage blow back at them? <laughs> <laughs> Kids say the darndest things. Yeah. Presidents say the darndest things. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Have you ever seen the video of the kid that's like explaining a dream? And he's just like, he just fucking loses it halfway through and won't stop. I haven't seen that, but when Miles's, I mean, Gail's brother was little, right? He would, all he was watching was wrestling when he was like three and four years old. And then he would dream about wrestlers coming and trying to body slam him. <laughs> and he would just wake up and he'd be like, uh, he'd tell us like, Papa Shango. He just tried to grab me, and then he'd go like this. Why didn't you try to help me? And we, we were like, it was a dream, dude. And he couldn't get the concept of dream. He just no. knows that his parents did yeah, nothing. Like, no, no, you were there, and you didn't help me. I really? rarely have a dream with anybody I know in it, I think. Really? Yeah, I don't think so. I dream with people I know in it. Sometimes, like, people I haven't seen in a long time, but... They will, people will show up like characters in my dream all the time. Hmm. Has Earl ever been in your dream sexually? <laughs> um, Not sexually, but yes, he has been in uh, a dream. He was in a, a dream not too long ago. It was like I had a very stressed out um, live performance. Uh, like we were doing a live show. Yeah. Um, but it was like some sort of, it was an unmasked and it was like a huge, uh, huge event. And we were all really excited about it. And for some reason at this event, we decided that there was going to be an open bar. But when we got there, there was just this tiny little bar cart with no servers. And there were hundreds of people at this venue. And we were like, me and Earl have food service abilities. We have (laughs) had it in our past. And me and Earl were slinging drinks and stressing. And it was like so incredibly stressful. You want to know something weird? And I haven't told any of you guys this. The Sirius XM party, Christmas party this year, is going to be at the Hard Rock. <laughs> yeah. Earl's Hard Rock. And that, doesn't that sound what the dream sounds like? Yeah, it does. But like, I was literally screaming at people, we, there's too many people, it's just me and Earl. I'm not back there fucking shaking cocktails. You're, we're doing beer and wine only. <laughs> now, Earl, like, what would really- be worse for you? If you're over there and you have to work for the Hard Rock that night and you're getting champagne from people you work with, <laughs> or you're well, on our side and your coworkers, you're having them go like, now what is this called again? A beef puff? <laughs> and you're eating and spitting back on their fucking tray. What it would be weirder for you? Weirder would be me working for the Hard working that night and <laughs> essentially working... For you guys, working with, for you guys, and yeah, we've good. never seen you working. Not here, not there. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is gonna be like just incredibly weird. And Are you insane. going to that party? I, yeah, it's my it's first hilarious. Christmas party as back. Are you going? Uh, yeah, I went to the Christmas party last year. Gail, um, you know what? I feel like I've had a tradition going. I've literally never been to a serious XM Christmas party. Why not keep it rolling? Well, here's the thing. It takes place at six, but it'd be easy for us to walk over. I mean, this is the first gentle one in a long one. The last year I went, they had it on the ground floor here. Yeah. And I stopped in for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Make it nice weird. and easy on you. And then the years before that, it was just garbage cans full of beer in the lobby. 
<laughs> the first year I went to an XM, I was sitting at the table with Wynton Marcellus. And I'm like, my life is fucking perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Bum, bum, bum. Um, my God, it's gonna I'm be gonna go over here to Steve. Steve, what do you got, buddy? Not too much. Just driving home. Hey, how about Fargo? Fargo is the winter, but is it Christmas? I don't remember no, there no. being I, Christmas, but it's a long, depressing winter. I seem to recall there was a tree in the house that he was wrapping up that when he was wrapping up to go outside and meet these guys, but maybe you're wrong. right. I might, I, about, I'm going to try to rewatch it. It gives me an excuse, but uh, I don't remember music? it being uh, no Christmas music. That was just that sad, depressing music and that sad, no skyline. You know what I mean? It was just uh, white meets white. Yeah. That movie, the first time I saw it really had me down. It's like I had seasonal fucking depression from it. Earl, do you think you could live in Fargo? No. I would, I would, I would eat a bullet first. Mm, that course. sounds delicious. <laughs> I need sun and sky and, and all that stuff. Go ahead and plug here, uh, Chris, and you could do all your little fucking plugs that you like to do for this five. Uh, this was written by uh, Glenn. It's on the iBang, and uh, he he's on Twitter at Glenn's Film. He never even gave out the title of it. The five, the best un-Christmas movies to enjoy this holiday season. He's trying to fuck with me, Vito. I think I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Just like that guy on the phone thought that you're fucking around. You know what? Maybe we got two meatball eaters here this year. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't no eat meatball eater. <laughs> you definitely eat a few meatballs. That's disgusting to me. <laughs> uh, Gail, you're going to be watching the tree lighting tonight with the baby? I am. I'm, I'm going to be watching the tree lighting uh, as you light the tree. I got news for you. I'm very weirded out by the baby because... I think since last night, it looks like someone has stole your nice little baby and put a much older child there. It's really weird. In the last week, she's had all these like like big advancements where it's starting to feel like she made this huge leap and she doesn't even look like a baby to me. She looks like a toddler. But today, I swear, she woke up and it, she looked different from when she went to bed. It was such a strange thing. Uh, you know how like we're like, oh, she looks like uh, me, she looks like Jack, she looks like you, she looks like yeah. your brother, she looks like your mom. Today, I think she looks like a baby Michelle. Really? Yeah. Man, yeah, she's she takes on a lot of looks. She does. Very, very weird how that happens. Um, all right, Brian says he wants to start a fist fight with us, and God damn it, I feel like I'm ready. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> I didn't actually think I was going to get through with these, but uh, two movies that have nothing to do with Christmas take place during Christmas, but again, nothing to do with Christmas. Okay. Those would be uh, Christmas Story and Christmas Vacation. All right, let's stop. Uh, no one cares about Christmas Vacation. That's a throwaway. Christmas Story is literally about a little boy desiring a Christmas present. I will admit that it has nothing to do with the baby Jesus, but it is an American Christmas story. Yeah. And then on Christmas, they go to dinner, and like it's a whole thing that they fuck up Christmas dinner. Right. I mean, Christmas this is pretty dinner. much the most like Christmas I, I didn't think I was going to get through with this call. It was kind of a joke, a throwaway, but... This fist fight, I would be willing to have between now and the end of existence. <laughs> You'd uh, win. Hands down. Thanks. Peace. Bye. Goes to you got wrong. That fucking movie, man. You know, we'll talk. About, we said we were going to do actual Christmas movies later this week. This was the non-Christmas movie, and he drug us into it. But that movie, much better than it even seems on the surface. The acting in that movie by everybody, flawless. Stood With, the test of time. Without flaws. Gil, you, you understand that since you said the word flawless to me the other day, I repeated it 85 times. Really? Yeah, because it got, that thing that you said, it really fucking moved me. 
Me too, and, yeah. And now I keep saying that term over and over, and I'm annoying myself. You know, I, I said that Earl was flawless today. That's not <laughs> fucking true. He's a diamond, he's, he's but a diamond in like the rough. Be- he's flawless like Beyonce. Earl, I want you to say to Gail what you said to me today, the thought that um, you had coming in on the train. What I have, um, yeah, I was very uh, humbled, moved. And what was the thought that you had, though? How much everyone was really happy that I was back. Like that meant a lot to me when he really, said that. Really, really happy. He said that to me in the lobby. He goes, "I was just thinking the way coming here." He goes, "Everyone is really happy that I'm back." And like, if I wasn't dead inside, <laughs> I'd have been so moved. That but, is so sweet, Earl. I wanted you to come back for so long. You know what I mean? It's like a Christmas miracle that you're back now. No, I feel like it's a miracle that I'm back. I believe more than anyone else I know, you belong in radio. Because you have a love for it that guys like this never grew up with it the way you did, never had the experience. Like, Earl, if you did his his life story, his Cameron Crow would have been him in a radio station instead of Rolling Stone. Yeah. But he's the Cameron Crow. Of radio. You know what I mean? Yeah. He had that almost famous where he's a kid and interning at the rock and roll station changed his life because he met like minded people. And Earl being out of radio has always bothered me. He does the fun to kick stuff back and <laughs> forth with. It, it's why this is a good show. Yeah, it's a good vibe. To, to well, I'm happy be you're back, Earl. It means the world to me. Okay. I'm, and I'm glad I've. I got the chance to work with you now. You got like, the I chance. I feel like everyone was like talked about Chris worked with Earl. It's I feel like now I'm finally part of the crew. But you don't understand me like between me and Earl, you guys are working with 60 years of fucking radio experience. Yeah. And though this is what kills me. You guys shit on it. No, you hashtag literally blessed. take your pants down. You no. fucking pull your cheeks apart. I- Definitely don't, don't squat literally shit do on that. Us. No, I would shit myself before I would ever shit on you, and Earl. <laughs> you right? would shit yourself anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a choice. It has nothing to do with respect. <laughs> oh, welcome back, my friend Lahayam. Thank you, Ronnie. Lahayam. All right, I'm gonna get. The, I'm gonna make like a shepherd and get the flock out of here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me tonight lighting the Christmas tree. <laughs> um, it's an honor. Thank you, New York, for picking me for this. I'm uh, really excited. And I promise you this. I'm going to sneak the F-bomb into that show. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> Network yeah. television. I'm going to go three, Please. two, fuck, <laughs> and then turn it on. <laughs> Please, the baby will be watching. Uh, turn the sound down during that part. Okay. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>